And welcome to Gerald Prem Stadium where the uh, Sulphur Springs Wildcats will be taking on the North Forney football team. And, Don, we've got uh, quite a matchup tonight after being off for three weeks. You being off for a little bit more. And uh, it's the new age of COVID football in northeast Texas. Right. Oh, uh, first game actually in 28 days. It was October the 2nd. This is the 30th, so it's been 28 days since the Wildcats played. And as you mentioned, I missed that ball game because of a surgery I had. Right. Everything turned out really good, by the way. And, and uh, so it's been five weeks for me. So uh, lo- looking forward to this uh, game with the North Forney Falcons. Yes, and, uh, of course, they're all um – the, we've got the Blue Blazes on the field right now, and the cheerleaders have just been introduced. They've uh, uh, had the uh, school fight song, and looks like we're getting ready for the Wildcats to line up and take the field. Uh, special welcome also not only to our radio listeners, but our YouTube live, those people that are streaming and watch, being able to watch the game live on YouTube. So you can uh, pull that up by going to uh, the KSST YouTube page and uh, clicking on the live button. So I think uh, we're going to try to get to the starting lineup uh, as the Wildcats are about to come out. And uh, which one? what do you want to do first, Don? All right, we can uh, dive into those lineups. Uh, you, you, well, I know uh, the first game uh, we missed the coin toss. They actually had it kind of off to the side somewhere. So, Well, they're lined up out in the middle out there. It looks like they may do a standard coin toss here oh, in a minute, okay. but it's, uh, we're yeah, not they, quite ready yet. They fooled us uh, back in week one. Uh, here is a North Forney Falcons offense, our quarterback. Uh, third year we've seen him, Jacob Acuna, a senior. Uh, running back, a uh, Nevada commit, uh, Ty Collins. Uh, another running back that they will use is uh, Akanemo Asuklo. Uh, wide receivers, uh, Cam Allen, as the Wildcats are coming out, by the way. Yep. Wide receiver, uh, Tyler Tucker. Uh, wide receiver, Colin Shipley. H-back is uh, Byron Golden, then a big 304-pound-per-man uh, offensive line. This is one of the biggest ones I've seen, maybe ever. Uh, the left tackle is Toby Chapman. He's just 215 and still averages 304. Left guard is uh, Riley Tracy. Uh, center is William Bressy. Uh, right guard is Josh Anderson. And the right tackle is Jake Schwartz. And the uh, defense for the Wildcats that will be looking at that offense. On the nose is Alex Rodriguez. Defensive tackles are DeAndre Peoples and Brighton Reuter. Uh, the inside linebackers, Ryan Carrillo and Wyatt Smithson. Outside linebackers, Cameron Hargrave and Landry Meskimen. On the corner corners, uh, Dominique Sims and uh, Cade Neaton. And the safeties are Wiley Bennett and Cordarian Bull Turner. Uh, The uh, defense for North Forney, and it is a 3-3 stack across the defensive line. Their disruptive nose tackle is Rod Brown. Uh, Defensive ends are Danny Sacido and Noah Monroe. Uh, The three linebackers in the middle is Akinimo Asuquo. uh, And uh, the outside guys are Chandler McGee and Donovan Holt. On the corners, Xavier Elder and uh, Amari Stewart. Their safeties are... Jeremy Bailey and Antorius Hambrick. And the treetop player back behind the middle linebacker is Demarcus Kirk. And uh, now for the uh, Wildcats offense. Let's see. Did he just announce the national anthem? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Here it comes.
Yeah, another great performance by the Wildcat Band. And we threw in a prayer for you there. That uh, yes, absolutely. That uh, we didn't know that was coming, but uh, that worked out. Uh, here's the uh, the final part of the starting lineups of Wildcats offense. At left tackle is uh, Sam J. Pryor. Left guard is Jacoby Yarbrough. The center is Raiden McCormick. Right guard is Alfredo Olavide. And the right tackle is uh, Sean Dial. Quarterback, Caden Wallace. Running back, Caden Davis. A, a B back is uh, Carson Fenton. And the uh, slot receiver, C.J. Williams. And the outside guys on the receivers are Weston Fields and Bryant Sanchez. Yeah, it looks like they're about to do the coin toss uh, out for captains for the uh, Wildcats, number one. That's Bryson uh, Lacey. Lacey. Yeah. yeah, the number 96, Alex Rodriguez. Uh, 24, Coben Wiley, number 30, Langston Bridges. And it looks like uh, the Falcons have won the toss and they're going to defer. So the Wildcats will be getting the ball on the kickoff here in just a few minutes. Among the uh, North Forney Falcons captains, uh, the quarterback Jacob Acuna and also uh, one of their defensive backs, Santorius uh, Hambrick, and I did not catch those other two numbers. Of course, we'll be getting ready for the J. Hodge Chevrolet kickoff. Uh, the Wildcats will be receiving. Uh, so after the Falcons have won the toss, uh, they chose to defer. And they'll take the kickoff at the beginning of the second half. And um, uh, the Falcons are undefeated this year, I believe. Is that right? Yes, uh, they are. 4-0. So, yeah, so uh, going to be a, a tough team uh, for the Wildcats to beat. But, of course, the Wildcats are excited to get back out on the field and uh, be able to, to play after being off several weeks. Have uh, It's uh, probably Caden Davis back there to receive the kickoff and number 21 as well, Don. And that would be Matthew, Matthew Mitchell. Yes, Matthew which, Mitchell. Uh, I, know, I remember when Ross and I did the first game, he fielded almost every kickoff. <laughs> they kicked at him all night long. Right. And here comes your um, Wildcat um, reception on the kickoff. Uh, the Forney Falcons are going to kick it uh, a little short, it looks like, Don. A uh, fair catch call for by the Wildcats taken at the 27-yard line. And that was caught there by C.J. Williams. And it's going to be marked at the, uh, I believe that'll be about the 27-yard line. Yep, looks like it. And so the Wildcats will go to work for their first Hootens Hardware first down. Hootens Hardware, they're more than just nuts and bolts. Here come the Wildcats uh, ready to uh, make something happen from the 27-yard line. All right, uh, Wildcats have uh, first and 10 with uh, Caden Wallace, the quarterback. Got the running back uh, back behind him. Sends a man in motion uh, off to the right side. Snap back to Wallace. He's throwing to the right. It's caught by Bryant Sanchez. He will move up the field and uh, moved across the 30. It looked like uh, uh, some players thought his knee went down, but they didn't tackle him, and he moved across the 30 up to about the 32. That's a gain of five on the play. It'll be second down and five for the Wildcats. And once that is, Caden Davis is uh, the running back, as you would expect. He is a leading rusher for the Wildcats yeah, the this man, year. man in motion on the last play was uh, Williams. And uh, he does that again. And this will be a handoff. Caden uh, Davis uh, hits across the 35 up to about the 36-yard uh, line. That will be one yard short of the first down. So the first big third down play of the ball game for the Wildcats at their own 36, third down and one. And now Caden Davis backs into that shotgun, has two receivers out to the left, one to the right, and oh. some motion in the line. And uh, Looks like it's going to be against the Falcons to me. Well, they yeah, they look like they made initial contact, and then the Wildcats center. And that is the call, as Chad said. With uh, Looked like their nose man there was a bit... Uh, maybe half a count too soon. And yeah, I wasn't psychic there, Don. I think that I saw the official actually throw the flag at the guy who, who, oh who moved first. <laughs> so that is a Hooten's Hardware first down, uh, Chad. Uh, Absolutely, uh, Hooten's Hardware. They're uh, down in Emory, Texas. Here he comes. First down and ten from the 41-yard line for the Wildcats. Back to Wallace. He looks down the field. He'll throw it in the flat. It's caught there by Caden Davis across the 40, across the 45. 
And it's going to be knocked out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play. It'll be second down and four. Uh-oh, a yellow flag is down on the ground. And it is a holding call, the preliminary indication. Yep, against the Wildcats, of course. So that'll set them back. It depends on the spot of the foul. So that's going to negate a very good uh, uh, screen pass and run by Caden Davis. Uh, so yeah, they gained about six on that. That'll be wiped away. Right, and they're going to so go. So Ross can take that off the stat sheet. That's right. They're going to move 10 yards back, and it's going to be first and 20 for the Wildcats. That's exactly right uh, from the 31-yard line. Caden Wallace back in the shotgun. And Caden waiting for the snap. Now takes a snap. He uh, he uh, fakes uh, pitching the ball, rolls to the left. Now throws a pass, and it's intercepted by North Forney across the 30, across the 20, and he will run this all the way back for a touchdown. And that interception was made by Tyler uh, Crochet. Right. So Easy for you to say, Don. Yeah, well, I thought it was crochet, but I believe that in our meeting with the radio crew from North Forney, they said that that's Crochet. I hope that's right going back to Forney, folks. And they've lined up quickly for their um, uh, extra point. And so uh, they are kicking the ball. A good snap. The ball is down. The kick is on the way, and the kick is good. That was made by Ricky Cortez. So, and uh, 10-17 left here in the first quarter. North 47, the Wildcats zero. Let's take a break. Back in a moment. And as we come back to Gerald Prim Stadium, the Wildcats are back to receive the Jayhawk Chevrolet kickoff once again after getting intercepted, and that interception was run back for a touchdown. So the North 40 Falcons are up 7-0 to zero with 10-17 left in the first quarter. And Caden Davis and I guess Mitchell's back again for the kickoff. Here it comes. Here's uh, the kick uh, by uh, Cortez. It's another short one. And uh, the Wildcats will fair catch it again. And now a flag flies. I think that was a flag, wasn't it? Not sure what that was. <laughs> something went up in the air there. We'll sure have to did. watch a replay of that. I guess that but was just something else. Looks like the uh, Wildcats will start again uh, on their own 25-yard line, pushed back a couple of yards from last time. But uh, the, here comes the Hootens hardware first down. And it is first down and 10 from the 25-yard line, and Caden Wallace is back in the shotgun. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left, and with Caden Davis uh, in the backfield. And Wallace will take the snap. It'll be a running play by Davis. Uh, he took a little bit of a hit, moved forward across the 30, up to around the 32-yard uh, line. That'll be a gain of – or 27-yard line. That'll be a gain of two. And it'll be second down and eight now from the 27-yard line. The Wildcats line up fast. They're you know, trying trip to make receivers out to the right side. And uh, Davis uh, back in the backfield from that uh, shotgun formation. And there's no quick snap on the play. And now let's see official moving in. Yeah, there's a flag down over there. Oh, there certainly is. False start, 56 on the offense. Mm. So the Wildcats, a false Three start. Down. Somebody up there got anxious. That'll move them back to the 22-yard line. So it'll be second down and now 13 from the 22-yard line. North Forney, a pick six. Oh, we're less than two minutes into the game, and they lead seven to nothing. They've had one other one I know of for sure uh, this year in their very first game against uh, Lone Star. Here's a running play to the right. Davis across the 20, up around the 24-yard line, a gain of two on the play. So it'll be third down and uh, 16 needed for the Wildcats at their own 24. So once again, a, a long play a call for for the Wildcats offense. Nine minutes and 10 seconds left in the first quarter as the Wildcats are down seven to zero. And uh, staring over to the sideline, getting that call from a couple of different guys over there. Looks like Metter and somebody else down there. That might be Shane McQueen. Uh, doing the signaling, and one of them's live and the other one's mute, I guess. Here's a big third and 16 back to Wallace. He throws the ball out in the flat. It's incomplete. Uh, uh, just the receiver could not hang on. I believe that was Davis, and so it'll be punt time for the Wildcats, fourth down and 11 from their own 24-yard line. And, and maybe they look, they look uh, the Wildcats look like it's been about 28 days since they've had a ball game. They look a little bit nervous uh, in the early going to me. That's just... 
And, of course, our quarterback back to, to punt, Caden Wallace, and I'm always looking for a fake punt uh, and that's run the, it. But it's not going to happen on this time, I'm pretty sure. That's the beauty of having your quarterback do the punting. And Davis, I mean, it, it, Wallace. Wallace got it away, and uh, it's going to go out of bounds uh, inside the North 40, 45-yard line at about the 43. So the Falcons will take over after the punt, a fairly decent punt, uh, how about 33 yards, I guess, uh, tallied on that one, on my calculation. We're not going to argue with the Don. So here come the, uh, here comes that monstrous uh, North Forney offensive line. And uh, Jacob Acuna is the quarterback for uh, North Forney. He fakes to the running back, rolling to the right, looking uh, down the field, shoots a pass. The ball is caught for a first down. And that was grabbed. Boy, their numbers are hard to read. That was Colin Shipley, the wide receiver. First down and 10 for North Forney at the Wildcats 46-yard line. And Acuna takes the snap, and now a whistle blows and blows everything dead. So we've got a flag on the play. False start on North Forney. And that's going to push them back into their own territory just a little bit to the 49-48 yard line. 821 left in the first quarter. Wildcats down 7-0. First uh, down and 15 uh, for uh, North Forney uh, at uh, their own 49-yard line. Acuna back in the shotgun, takes a snap. He's uh, getting a rush. He runs, steps up and now throws the ball down the field. Had a receiver out there but missed uh, on the connection. Has tried to get it out there to Cam Allen who was probably as highly touted a receiver as they had. I think he's second on the team in catches. But now it will be second down now and uh, 15 uh, for the Falcons at their own 49-yard line. Acuna takes a snap, and uh, he fakes and keeps uh, bootlegging around the left side and crosses the Wildcats' 40-yard line, and then uh, he has tackle there on a good tackle for the Wildcats by Bull Turner. Just uh, three yards short of the first down. So it'll be a third down and three for the uh, Falcons. They just tried to run over him when he got up there, just like a uh, running back. So the ball is at the 39-yard line uh, in Wildcats territory on this third and three. So a big play for the Wildcats defense, but it may be four down territory. And now the first run that we've seen and uh, breaking some tackles, getting the first down. And that looked like uh, Ty Collins, the uh, uh, commit to the University of Nevada. Yep, and Ty Collins, number 21. That is first and 10 at the Wildcats' 34-yard line. He has rushed for 576 yards in four games. There's the fake by Acuna. Throws the ball down the field. It's caught inside the 20 uh, down to the 16-yard uh, line, and number that one again two. was Cam Allen. And first down and 10 for the uh, Falcons and, uh, they've at got the to, Wildcats 16-yard line. They're moving up to the line really quick, trying to keep the Wildcats defense on, on their heels there. They're going to snap the ball. Yeah, they've probably got the good tempo offense like that. Now, now they've got to kind of get their offense set up right. And uh, Acuna back in the shotgun now sends a man across the backfield and he will sweep the ball around the right side. Gets across the 15 to the 10 and down close uh, to about the uh, five yard line. Number 28 uh, for uh, the Jermaine Oakley. Falcons. That's uh, not a name that I had heard much about. But first down and goal now for the Falcons at the six-yard line. Back to Acuna. Acuna hands off, and he'll run into the end zone. Touchdown. And that was Ty Collins with a six-yard uh, run. I just uh, went pranced into the end zone untouched. They just went around the defensive line of the Wildcats, and that brings the Falcons up 13 to zero over the uh, Wildcats pending the extra point. That's probably about the sixth or seventh touchdown that Collins has had this year. And extra point again, and once again, Tortez. I know he, I, I saw where he had missed one. I'm not sure what happened on that one, but here's the kick on the way. And this kick is no good. Well. Or did they blow it dead? I, I think. I um, think they, they must have. Yeah, I think they're going to have to kick it again. Yeah. I think it was good, but I think uh, either they weren't ready <laughs> to snap the ball, the ref uh, referees weren't ready for the. Uh, no, actually no, no they're back at the yardage. They're, yeah. yeah, they're going to back it up here, so they're going to kick it again from just a little further out. Don. Yeah, this will be for, instead of the ten, which is usual, it's back at the fifteen for Cortez. 
And so we'll take two here as we do in the TV business. The ball is down. There's the kick on the way. And this, this kick is good by Cortez. 6.44 left here in the first quarter. New score here from Gerald Prim Stadium. The North Forney Falcons 14 and the Wildcats 0. We'll take a break and be back in a moment. And we're back at Gerald Prim Stadium where the Wildcats will receive the Jayhawk Chevrolet once again because the uh, North Forney Falcons have uh, uh, scored on the Wildcats again. 14-0 with 6.44 left in the first quarter. Um, Don, it's just been uh, kind of uh, the first of a disappointing run uh, in the beginning there uh, for the Wildcats where they threw the interception and that went back for a touchdown and then North Forney did a good job of uh, moving the ball when the second time they had the possession and got into the end zone. 57-yard touchdown drive and uh, another kickoff coming up now for Ricky Cortez. He approaches the ball, puts the foot into it, a short kick. The Wildcats take it at the 20. This is Davis across the 25, and he's tackled up around, uh, let's call it the 28-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Looks like it's going to be familiar territory for the Wildcats. This is exactly where they started the first two times. and uh, read my mind. They're coming out for the Hootens Hardware first down yet again. And uh, in between... They like that spot in between the 25 and the 30, but they really need to get out of that uh, as we're moving left to right on your radio dial. Here come the Wildcats, first and first and 10 at their own 28. And uh, it is first and 10 uh, at the 28-yard line for the Wildcats. And once again, Caden Davis, or excuse me, Caden Wallace back in the shotgun will take the snap, steps back into the pocket. He fires the ball down the right side incomplete. Yep, here comes the flag. Uh, Tried that was, to get it over to Weston Field. Yeah, so Weston there was Fields a lot of contact made on the play. He was pushed out of bounds. Said, yeah. there was a flag down. Yeah, he was pushed out of bounds about 5 or 10 yards before he could uh, – uh, it, it, before Caden Wallace even let uh, let go of the ball, so. That was uh, Amari Stewart, the uh, defensive back, uh, covering Weston Fields, and so that'll be a 15-yard penalty for the uh, against uh, North Forney, moving the ball up to the 43-yard line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Great. 6:35 left in the first quarter. North Forney leads the Wildcats 14 to nothing. Great opportunity for the Wildcats right here, almost to midfield. And uh, Wallace back in the shotgun again. We'll take the snap and a handoff. Uh, this is a different running back. Oh, a good run by J.J. Hall as uh, he moves up to the 50-yard line. So J.J. Hall with a good run and uh, a pickup of seven on the play. Second down and three for the Wildcats at the 50-yard line. And Wallace and everybody else on the offense looking over the sideline to get that play from the Wildcats offensive coaches. One receiver left and right. They have a slot receiver to the left who now is going to head to the right. And here's a uh, handoff again to J.J. Hall. He's straight ahead for just a couple of yards. Actually, let's say just one, I think, to the 49-yard line. So now it's uh, going to set up third down and two for the Wildcats. So a real tester here from the North Forney 49-yard line. Yeah, they stood him up at that one-yard gain, then pushed him back about five more before they blew the whistle, but they gave him forward progress there for a one-yard gain. J.J., one of my favorite players just because of his size, and I uh, always liked those small guys. I remember Joe Scott was a small football player, but, man, what a heart and what a great football player he was. Here's a snap, and they'll try Hall again, and he's going to be stopped short. He may have gained... Uh, one yard. Looked like the Falcons were ready for that one. It's a one. Well, they're going to move it back to the original line of scrimmage. So fourth down and two, and Wildcats are kind of looking like they're going to go for this here. Yeah, they're showing that they're going to line up and go for it right now, Don. Absolutely. Two receivers out to the left for the Wildcats. Big. Uh, let's see if they try to draw them offside. They may try yeah, to do that. North yep, Forney's yep. not biting so far. 11 seconds left on the play clock. Now they're still going to go for this on this big fourth and two, and they're going to try a running play. It's first and ten for uh, Caden Davis as he really fired through there and got down to the North Forney 46, first down and ten. So Coach Owens figures he's down 14, and he does not want to give North Forney that ball back, and he went for it and made the fourth Fantastic play. execution on that as uh, we get uh, another Hootens hardware first down for the Wildcats. And it is at the uh, 46-yard line in uh, Falcon territory against that stack, uh, that uh, 
3-3 stack defense. And Wallace will take the snap. And here's a handoff again to Davis. And he's going to be stopped right about the line of scrimmage. He may have. No, I mean, they're not giving him anything on that. Second down and 10. Again, at the North 40, 46-yard line. And once again, uh, kind of a, from the, this is certainly not your father's NASCAR that uh, years ago, the speedy offense of Jeff Rudin. Wildcats take their time. Here's a fake, and now Wallace rolling to the left, and he's going to keep across the 50, across the 45, and picks up a couple more yards, and they're going to mark him. Say he went out of bounds at the 44. So it's going to be third down and about eight. Yeah, he had a couple of receivers out on the left-hand side there, but uh, just couldn't uh, connect with any of them. Couldn't, neither one of them could get open. I think C.J. Williams and Cable Glenn were over on that side. So now a big uh, third down play, uh, third down and eight uh, at the 44. I thought he actually... Did a little bit better than that, but he got marked at the 44-yard line, so that official was right on top of it. I'm sure he got the right spot. Weston Fields out here as one of the receivers on the right-hand side. Certainly glad to see him back. I saw him a lot this summer, and he was as I, I was having a suffering with a bad shoulder. Timeout taken by the Wildcats, 3.31 left here in the first quarter. North 40, 14, the Wildcats zero. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. And 3.31 left uh, here in uh, the uh, first quarter of play. North 40, 14, the Wildcats zero, and the Wildcats facing a big uh, third and eight now uh, from uh, their own, or well, the North 40, 44-yard line. And here come the Wildcats. North 40's defense has been waiting uh, uh, just a second. And here come the Wildcats with uh, Wallace, the quarterback. He's got uh, Davis as the running back. Two receivers out to the left and Weston Fields out to the right. Now they'll send a man to the right side and Wallace will throw to the right. He th completes it to Bryant Sanchez and that's going to lose a yard on the play back to the 45. So it'll be fourth down and nine from the uh, North 40, 45 yard line. And, let's, and now it looked like a punt situation here. A lot of personnel coming in and leaving. Some in, some out for uh, once again, uh, Wallace uh, will do the punting. North 40, their numbers are not the easiest ones to read. Back there deep for them is uh, Colin Shipley. And here's the snap, a good one back to Wallace. He gets it away, kind of a low kick, but it gets a good roll inside the 20. And the Wildcats down that ball down around the 19-yard uh, line. So North 40, back inside their own 20-yard line, will get their second crack at, uh, with the ball on offense. 2.41 left here in the first quarter. It's North 40, 14, the Wildcats zero. We had a pick six on the Wildcats' first drive by uh, Tylen uh, Cro Crochet. And then... Uh, uh, the first North 40 drive, a six-yard touchdown run by Ty Collins. Jacob Acuna takes a snap, and he's going to keep around the right side. Acuna on the run, and oh, that's a very uh, effective run for the first down all the way up to the 30-yard line as Jacob Acuna went 11 yards and picked up the first down. He has had some yardage this year, but... He had not been a huge runner, but he can do it effectively. Back to Acuna. He's going to throw from the pocket. Looking deep. Throws the ball down the field. Incomplete. Good coverage uh, for the Wildcats on the play. And so covering in that one was uh, Caden Eaton against that uh, North 40 uh, wide receiver. I believe that was Shipley. So incomplete pass on the bomb. And uh, North 40 does like to go down the field with the pass. So Acuna back in the shotgun on second down and 10, and he will uh, hand off to uh, Collins, and uh, he's bottled up, hit right at the 30-yard line. No gain on the play. And so it'll be third down and 10. Wildcats, I know uh, Coach uh, G, Coach uh, Guetta, would like to see that defense get off the field on third and 10. Back to Acuna. He fires the ball out, and it is caught for the first down for uh, North Forney. 
And I believe that was uh, Arichetta. Arichetta. So it is first and 10 now for North Forney at the 41 yard line. Acuna fires the ball out. Oh, dropped on the play by Cam Allen. He probably thinks, could I have a do over on that? Second down and 10 on the uh, incompleted pass from the Falcon 41 yard line. Well, you know, it happens even to the best of them. You're going to have a drop every once in a while. So second down and 10 now from the 41 yard line. Oh, back to Acuna. He wasn't ready for it, but he picks it up. Now he's scrambling around back there. He's going to run to the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, down the 35, inside the 30, finally stepped out of bounds. And the official says right at the Wildcats 30 yard line. My goodness, you talk about making lemonade from lemons. As he was looking around and moving players and the ball hit him right in the gut. Landed on the ground. He scooped it up and ran for a first down. Here's a pass. It is caught uh, a short gain on the play. Good uh, defense by the Wildcats. That was completed to uh, uh, Arichetti. Arichetta. Arichetta, the receiver. A gain of two. Sec- and now a second down and eight from the 28-yard line in uh, Wildcats territory. And uh, Acuna now hands off to Collins. Collins has a man on his back and fights his way down to about the 25-yard line. So it's third down and five now for the Falcons at the Wildcat 25. And once again, a uh, moment these Wildcats defenders would like to uh, stiffen up a little bit here. And Acuna heads to the right. Looks like he wants to keep around the right side, and he runs for the first down and goes out of bounds inside the 20-yard line down to about the 18. First down and 10 for North Forney, and once again, they're getting uh, mileage out of uh, Jacob Acuna running the football. And so first down and 10 for the uh, North Forney Falcons. And a snap back to Acuna. He looks down the field. He fires the ball down. It's caught uh, and heading toward the end zone. He made it to the one-yard line. That was uh, Cam Allen. He reached the football, but he just he was too far away. First down and goal now for the Falcons at the Wildcats' one-yard line. Just 33 seconds left. Oh, another snap that Acuna wasn't ready for. This blown-up play will really hurt him. As he just had to fall on that with one of the Wildcats steaming in there. As coming in quick, I think that was Meskimen. Yeah, Landry Meskimen. And so he fell on it back at the 13-yard line. So from the 1 to the 13, second and goal now from the 13-yard line. Boy, they've got to talk to that center. He must be uh, fired up or something. He's snapping that ball before the quarterback is calling for it. And now that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So we've done one here at Gerald Prem Stadium. We're through with the first quarter. The North Forney Falcons 14 and the Wildcats 0. And we'll be back with the start of quarter number two right after this break. And welcome back to Gerald Prem Stadium where the uh, Wildcats are down 14 to nothing. The start of the uh, second quarter here, Don. Absolutely, and it's uh, they're marking the ball at about the 12. I think I called it the 13, but that's uh, second and goal from the 12-yard line for North Forney, and now the officials are slowing things down here. Looks like somebody may have called a, another timeout. Offense. Offense takes a timeout. So uh, still a full 12 minutes of the second quarter left to play. North Forney 14, the Wildcats 0. We'll take a break back in a moment. Uh, North Forney takes a snap. Acuna back to pass. A oh, man, wide open, but he missed connection with the receiver. And, boy, the Wildcats were fortunate there. He was rushed, though, and that's yes. what that rush will do. Yeah, they hurried him up, uh, and so he overthrew it to number 10 out there for the Falcons. Isn't he a tall fella? Tyler yeah. Tucker, six foot three, third down and goal to go now from the 12-yard line for the North Forney Falcons. And, uh, once again, Jacob Acuna. He, he came off the JV team two years ago to beat the Wildcats in Forney. There's a snap back to Acuna looking. Uh, fires an out pattern. The ball is caught, and he gallops into the end zone there. 
for yeah. a touchdown for the Falcons. Yeah, there's that a flag a, on the play, but oh, that's okay. going to be against the Wildcats. It's, it's going to be declined. One of the Wildcats jumped off sides. And Shipley was the receiver on the touchdown pass. Oh, deep. Yeah, okay. That's what Chad said. Yep. Okay, so Shipley yep. made the catch. He actually slipped and fell and picked himself up just in time to catch the ball. And then he just kind of leaped into the end yeah, zone. Yeah, he didn't get a knee down. He just got a hand down, and he uh, uh, was able to regain and, and get into the end zone. Here they come for another kick, 20-0. to zero. And uh, uh, once again, Ricky Cortez, the kicker, uh, puts the ball down. The kick uh, looks good. It is good. 11:47 left uh, here in the second quarter. New score here from Gerald Prem Stadium, North Forney 21, and the Wildcats 0. And uh, James, uh, we'll take care of business and be right back. Welcome back to Gerald Prem Stadium, where the Wildcats are back to receive the uh, Jay Hodge Chevrolet kickoff. Caden Davis back. There's a long kick uh, down the field, and it's going to be down inside the five-yard line. Mitchell's got it across the 10, across the 15, the 20, 25, running straight ahead. And finally, North Forney kind of corralled him there and dropped him at the 30-yard line. So a pretty good return there. Uh, Matthew Mitchell, after the ball, was kind of bouncing around inside the five down there. And here again, familiar territory for the Wildcats. We're moving right to left now, uh, but they're on the – looks right about to, on the 30-yard line for the Hooters Hardware first down for the Wildcats on the 30-yard line in their own territory. I think that may be the high water mark, isn't it? Uh, seemed like about the 30-yard line. Wallace back to pass. He's uh, fading back, now throws a screen pass incomplete. Uh, defender was all over uh, – the receiver there who was uh, C.J. Williams. Yes. and Good uh, sophomore yes. a slot player. Looks like number 11 for the Falcons just wrapped him up just as the ball got there. And, uh, oh, he Hambrick, hold, yeah. He couldn't hold on to it. He's the one that made the pick six against uh, Frisco Lone Star. That game really kind of signaled to the football world that this North Forney team might be special this year. Guess they'll find out if they get matched up with Ennis. Wallace uh, takes a snap, and here's a running play. Davis uh, running to the right, and he's bottled up and going to be hit for a loss of uh, about one yard on the play back to the 29-yard line. It'll be third down and 11 for the Wildcats. 11-20 left in the second quarter, and North Forney leads 21 to nothing. I'm kind of getting vibes like I've seen this movie before, maybe the last game of last year. Tough defense for the uh, that the Falcons has against the Wildcats. So, yes, they are. they have Wallace uh, back in the shotgun again. They fake that quick snap, and I guess occasionally they use that, but uh, usually not. And then they'll regroup. Trip receivers out to the left side for Wallace. We'll take the snap. He's looking to the left. Throws the pass incomplete. Tried to get it into uh, Mitchell. And uh, yep. once again, the Falcons had the secondary guys in a good, good spot. And number 19 for the Falcons had uh, got a hand on it, so it uh, he he's uh, kicking himself, thinking he could have had an interception there. But uh, it's fourth down for the Wildcats, so it's going to be punt time again. And, uh, you know, even though I'm looking for it every time, Don, I, I don't think it's going to be a fake punt this time. Yeah, but it always could be. I, I always like that when uh, – on those occasions when the Wildcats have that quarterback that punts. Mm -hmm. Certainly so, opens up the possibilities. And actually their backup punter, I think, is Mitchell, and uh, he's a he's the backup quarterback. And now, oh, gosh, that look, had the look of some kind of fake. A, right, yeah. And, uh, so a whistle. It, a whistle's blown. I don't know. Oh, delay of game. Took too long to snap the ball there. Yeah, well, number uh, – nine there was uh, trying to get lined up for the Wildcats and was changing position and came back out here to the sideline was late getting set up and that's what ran the clock out. So uh, fourth down and 16 of all marked back to the 24 yard line for uh, Caden Wallace. He will rugby to the right and uh, gets the ball down the field again gets a very good hop uh, uh, kind of muffed by North Forney. They pick it up at the 41 straight ahead is Shipley and he'll move it up to about the 48-yard line, a seven-yard return. Had a trouble kind of picking that ball up, but first and 10 for the Falcons at uh, their own 48-yard line. They lead 21 to nothing with 10.33 left here in the second quarter. And that Wildcats defense. 
Kind of familiar territory here for the Falcons as well, right about midfield to start off. And uh, they're going to go to work. Fouls on the play. 26 of the receiving team. Six. Correction, 26 of the of receiving team. Six of the kicking team. Offset. We're going to repeat that now. My goodness, uh, fouls on a couple of players on the, on the punt. Mm-hmm. Have no idea. You said I, they're going to repeat that. the play. Are they going to go back and punt again? Is that what? Well, that that's what. That, took yes, that's, that's exactly so what's going to happen. So they're moving from the 48 yard line all the way back down. If they can remember where they, where they punted I'm it from. Tell them they can put it on the 24. That'd be nice. Yep. And so they're going to punt the ball oh, again. And some offsetting penalties, obviously. Don't see that. Personal foul type. Uh, Penalties is what I'm guessing, but uh, they didn't. Uh, yeah, that uh, that sounded right. I guess uh, boys will be boys kind of thing, but it will negate the punt, so the Wildcats will get another chance to kick it. And, of course, Shipley gets another chance to maybe pick it up a little Yeah, he's standing cleaner. back here at their own 45-yard line, right where he, he fielded the last one. And Caden Wallace, again, back in uh, punt formation, has a... Uh, three-man picket fence keeping North Forney out. He got that one high, and Shipley calls for the fair catch. He made the catch, but he pitched over backwards. Yes, he had a tough time holding on to it, but he did. And he so did. That, that'll the push 40-yard line. The, yeah, the Forney uh, Falcons back, uh, the North Forney Falcons back to the 40-yard line. So a little bit uh, better field position as the Wildcats are concerned on defense because now the Falcons will start eight yards back from where they were on the previous so first down and 10 for the Falcons. They are at their own 40-yard line. And Acuna takes the snap. Here's a receiver around play. And, uh, uh, oh, gosh, the Wildcats did a good job of uh, handling LaMarcus yeah, they, Kirk. They and wrapped he, uh, him gained, up. Yes, uh, almost no gain on the play, maybe half a yard. Yep. And it'll be basically second down and 10, no gain on the play, maybe a foot. But uh, we don't deal in feet. Have to have the whole yard. So second down and 10 now for the uh, Falcons from the 40-yard line. Acuna will take the snap. He fakes to that guy this time. A flag flies. Acuna rolling to the right. And now will sail it down the field. Man open and made the catch. But this may come back. It's inside the 30. It was a nice catch there by Tyler Tucker. Yeah, number 10 for the Falcons. It was just uh, kind of had a defender on him, but was uh, pretty wide open. It looks and like they're bringing it back. They, yeah, everybody's walking back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's see what the call is. That's usually a pretty good indicator. Here and we go. Formation, five yards oh my! On the offense, still second down. Well, a great, uh, a great uh, turn of events for the Wildcats there as the uh, Falcons get pushed back five yards. So An illegal be, formation. Yes. Loss of five. It'll be uh, now uh, 15 yards needed for the first down. So it'll be second down and uh, 15. At least that's what the down marker has. Scoreboard has third. And Jim Wright maybe. I mean, Jim Moore may be right. But here's a play for North Forney. There's a snap and a handoff running back. And the Wildcats are all over Ty Collins. And he's going to gain one yard. And so now I believe it's going to be third down. And... Uh, about 13. 13 like. needed, yeah, yep. from the 37-yard uh, line. Right, so Wildcats uh, defense is kind of uh, getting in tune with this offense from the Falcons. Yeah, if they can do it one more time here. Here's uh, Acuna. Pass is uh, caught uh, right on the sideline, moved forward uh, past the original line of scrimmage a few yards, but about seven shy of the first down. Tackle made at the uh, 43-yard line, so it'll be punt time now for North Forney from uh, their own 43-yard line. So that uh, illegal formation penalty really hurt them after they had a long pass game. Matthew Mitchell back there to receive the punt for the Wildcats is standing on the Wildcat about the 20-yard line. And here's the snap, uh, the punt on the way. It's a high kick and short, and uh, Mitchell coming up, he'll let it bounce, and it uh, bounces uh, two yards back toward North Forney and goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. A little bit better field position for the Wildcats than what they're used to. And, of course, the Wildcats are going to be coming back out for another Hootens Hardware first down. Caden Wallace will go to work and try to uh, move that ball and get it to midfield first and then take it the rest of the way. So it is first down and 10 for the Wildcats. They are at their own 37-yard line. 
And once again, uh, staring uh, across the field. Let me see here. I think we have a change. I think Mitchell is now the quarterback for the Wildcats. That is correct. So Matthew Mitchell. You are correct. And here's a running play to the left side. Oh, a lot of trouble here for the uh, back uh, running the ball around. Five. And that was C.J. Nice. Williams. Oh, C.J. Williams. Yep. That flanker around, and it ends up uh, losing about six yards. So, uh, so it'll be second down and 16 for uh, the Wildcats with uh, Matthew Mitchell, the quarterback. He's a pretty good runner. I noticed that in that Lovejoy game as I was watching my stream, recovering from my surgery at home while Chad was doing the game. Mitchell uh, from the shotgun, trips to the right, takes a snap, fires the ball out. It is caught out there. Mitchell, I mean, uh, Williams again, but he was hit right away and uh, no gain on the play, so it'll be third down and still uh, about uh, 16 yards needed for the Wildcats for a first down. One of that defensive uh, end for North Forney made the tackle. That was uh, Cecito. Just checking the sideline here. Caden Wallace is on the sideline, helmet off, but he's uh, standing up. Uh, so they've just made a uh, just a quarterback change. I don't think he's injured. So just an update on that. All right. So here's third down and 16 with a ball uh, at the Wildcat 31-yard line for Matthew Mitchell. Mitchell looks down the field. Pass is caught uh, into the secondary. A nice play uh, by the Wildcats. Good Cable catch Glenn. there by Cable Glenn, who uh, – has as, about as many catches as anybody. I think he's second on the team coming into the game, and that's a first down for the Wildcats. That moves the sticks for the Wildcats. First and uh, 10 from their own 48-yard line. Another Hootens Hardware first down. Ball's at the 48 uh, for, for the Wildcats. First down and 10, and good pass by Mitchell. Always like to get that first completion on the boards, and again, he called for the snap a couple of times, but that was uh, just kind of a a Cable, ruse. Cable Glenn out here to the left. Two receivers out to the right side for the Wildcats. And now a flag flies. Two in the secondary of North Forney. So, delay of game. Offense. Oh. Five yards. Still third down. That's delay of probably game. The guy that keeps the clock is first probably down. that guy first. deep in the secondary. So that's yeah. why his flag came out. And and the other official seemed to notice it too. So. C.J. Williams and Weston Fields over on the other side uh, out as receivers. First down and 15 now for the Wildcats as uh, they will uh, start now from their own 43-yard uh, line. And Mitchell takes the snap. He looks. Oh, he's hit. The ball is loose on the ground. It's picked up by North Forney, and he's heading to the end zone, and it's going to be a defensive touchdown for North Forney. Well, Mitchell was back to pass and got hit. Uh, it did not look like his arm was going forward, so the uh, ref did not blow the whistle, and he got hit, lost the ball. Uh, North Forney picked it up and went 43 yards back uh, into Wildcat territory for a touchdown, bringing the score to 27-0 to as 625 left in the uh, second quarter as the North Forney Falcons line up for an extra point. Boy, their numbers are hard to read. Extra point uh, coming. The snap is good. Here's the kick by Cortez on the way, and the kick is good. 6.25 uh, left here in the second quarter, and North Forney has scored two defensive touchdowns in this game, and they lead 28 to nothing over the Wildcats. We'll be back with uh, more uh, right after uh, a short couple break. of spots. Yeah. And we're back at Gerald Prem Stadium where the Wildcats are down 28 to nothing. The uh, North Forney Falcons are about to kick off the J. Hodge Chevrolet kickoff as we have uh, Caden Davis and Mitchell back to uh, receive the uh, kickoff. Don? All right. Uh, here comes uh, the kickoff by uh, Cortez, uh, Ricky Cortez. He puts the foot into it, and it's going to be uh, short and taken on the fly by the Wildcats across the 25, but he is bottled up. I believe right that was around Mitchell. the 28 or 30 yard line. Yeah, Mitchell on the co uh, on the play, and we did uh, thanks to the sharp eyes of uh, Ross. He identified the North Forney player, and he was a player that Coach Young was very effusive in his praise for. Uh, during, when we talked to the coordinators, that was Rod Brown. 
And when you say the sharp eyes of Ross, you really mean the young, the young sharp eyes well, of Ross. Has been, but he had binoculars, too, I will say that. It looks like Mitchell's back. Uh, All right, Mitchell, the quarterback, uh, takes the snap. He uh, hands off to the running back, and he is cut down just right in his tracks there, and that'll and be. They've changed it up on us again. That's uh, Caden Wallace back in the quarterback, and You're Mitchell right. was lined up as a receiver. So Mitchell doing a lot of duty out there. Now he just uh, returned the kickoff. He was quarterback for the last uh, uh, session there, and now he's in as receiver. Okay, loss of four on the play. Back to the uh, 26-yard line. It'll be second down and 14, and Caden Wallace, the quarterback. And, uh, yeah, Mitchell, uh, that's so uh, he can play some safety for you too. And do a little bit of everything for the Wildcats. Back to uh, Wallace, and Wallace hands off, and Davis uh, uh, may be 28 to nothing, but Davis is always going to give you the hard run. And he got back up to around the 30-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Third down and 10 to the Wildcats at their own 30. Unfortunately, some familiar territory for the Wildcats at their own 30-yard line as they uh, look to the sidelines to have the play called in. And so another a big uh, third down play here back to Wallace. So Wallace heading back. Big rush. He screen pass. The ball is caught. Uh, will gain a little bit, but not enough. Did a great job of uh, getting rid of that ball and a great job of uh, the receiver snagging it there, but just couldn't make anything out of it. It's going to be punt time again for the Wildcats. That was their B back. That was uh, Carson Fenton which uh, is uh, part of a trivia question, who has the touchdown pass for the Wildcats this year. Right. And Chad called his name back against Lovejoy. That was Carson Fenton, the B-back. So punt time, and Wallace back to punt on this fourth down and six. A snap back to Wallace. Oh, he's oh. going to, he is going to fire the Here's ball down. He man open the caught in the secondary it's first Mitchell. down for the Wildcats to Mitchell. And uh, he tr brings it all the way down to the 40 yard line. Well, yeah. we talked about that all night long. Thank you, Greg Owens, for the fake punt. As I'm excited now, as the Wildcats get past midfield into uh, Falcon territory, all the way to the 40 yard line for the Falcons. Uh, that was quite, uh, quite the long pass and run for, uh, uh, from Wallace to Mitchell, and there, here comes the Hootons Hardware first down for the Wildcats. They're at the 40-yard line, and here's a fake to the running back. Wallace back to pass, shoots the ball up the middle, a wide open Fenton, Fenton inside the 10, and he's caught inside the five-yard line. First and goal for the Wildcats. Another. In, uh, right at the five. Another beautiful play by Wallace, a great uh, uh pass downfield. It was a little short but uh, uh, the receiver waited on it and he got uh, right down into the red zone for the Wildcats all the way down to the five yard line. First and a goal for the Wildcats. And it is down on that uh, five yard line. Wallace back in the shotgun. Snaps those hands together. Here's a running play for the Wildcats. Touchdown Wildcats! as that was Caden Davis, five-yard run. Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says, way to go, Wildcats, as they put it in the end zone for six. Caden Davis on the uh, on the run and uh, didn't have any trouble getting through that 40, North 40 Falcon defense. And once again, running hard. That's uh, Caden Davis is always going to give you that real hard run. They're lined up to kick. And this is Josh Tavera. They remember Angel Tavera. This is his brother, I do believe that's correct. The ball is down, uh, the kick by Josh, and it is good for the Wildcats. 348 left here in the uh, second quarter. New score now, North 40, 28, and the Wildcats 7. We'll take a couple of spots here and uh, be back with you back in a moment. And welcome back to Gerald Prim Stadium where there's 3.48 left in the half as the Sulphur Springs Wildcats finally get on the board. Seven points against the North 40 Falcons, 28. We're here for the J. Hodge Chevrolet kickoff. J. Hodge Chevrolet, your place for Chevrolet. And here is Josh Tavera approaching, and it's an onside-like kick, but it found its way out of bounds. And so that will... Uh, They'll yeah. probably take it right there where it went out of bounds. Almost a line drive right to the uh, Forney uh, defender there that was right on the 50-yard line, and he just watched it go by and go out of bounds. He he, he saw that coming, I guess, and knew it was going fast enough that it was going to go out of bounds. And then they'll mark off five for the 
kick out of bounds, which is, I guess, illegal procedure is what it's considered. And right. North Forney was real delicious uh, field position, as Chad's pointed out. They've had some of that tonight. And they're going to start in Wildcat territory. At the 47-yard line. So Acuna, the quarterback, takes the snap, fakes to the running back, and he sails the ball down the field, just kind of throws it up down there, and it's caught by North Forney inside the 20 and continuing to rumble inside the 10 down there, just a ball just thrown up there. It was almost a jump ball, and he uh, he snagged it out and, and pulled three Wildcat defenders with him all the way down to lo- looks like about the seven-yard line. So LaMarcus Kirk was the receiver that went up and got it there. So first and goal for the Falcons at the seven-yard line. And Acuna takes the snap, and here's a handoff, a running back straight up the middle, touchdown, that once again is Ty Collins, the seven-yard touchdown run. Yeah, the Wildcat uh, had him wrapped up but just couldn't pull him down, and uh, he he carried him all the way into the end zone, uh, but uh, unfortunately he had the ball also, and so that puts the Falcons up 34-7 to over the Wildcats with 319 left in the half. And here comes the extra point. Cortez to kick it here, try to tack on that extra point. And the snap is down. The kick on the way by Cortez, and the kick is good. By the way, Collins goes 2-11, so he has kind of a load to bring down. The kick is good. North 40, 35, the Wildcats 7, 319 left here in the second quarter. And we'll take a break here of a couple of spots, and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Gerald Prem Stadium. Uh, here comes the uh, North Forney kickoff for the Jayhawk Chevrolet kickoff. And uh, Cortez uh, kicks the ball down the field. A running start again for the Wildcats. Taken at the 20, across the 25, and uh, maybe about the 26-yard line on the kickoff return. I believe that was Mitchell again. There's Mitchell again. He's uh, pulling all kinds of duty. He held uh, for the extra point uh, kick, uh, kick a little bit ago after the Wildcat touchdown. Of course, he played a couple of uh, uh, snaps as quarterback there. And uh, now he's going to stay in as a receiver, it looks like. And then uh, Caden Wallace is going to be our quarterback for this round. And so Caden back in there. 313 still left. It's 35-7. to seven. Hooten's hardware first down. And Wallace back in the shotgun takes the snap, and it's a running play and bursting through there up to around the 30-yard line. That was a new running back. Oh, we haven't seen him tonight, Three. Douglas Deloney. Yeah, and he got upended there by the Falcon defense, but uh, got a few yards out of it. And he's another one of those guys that is a load, and that's what uh, he kind of brings is that different, uh, a, a real size guy, and he gains uh, – Second down seven. Looks like uh, about uh, four on the play, second down and six. And now here's a running play again. Deloney bursting into the secondary a little bit anyway. He's going to go down to the 33-yard line, and that's uh, going to be uh, three yards short of the first down. So it'll be third and three. This will be a big one for this Wildcats offense. They want to continue to maintain possession of that ball and see if they can't get on the scoreboard again. They have 2.20 left uh, here in the second quarter. Mitchell and Williams out here as receivers. And back to a Wallace. He looks down the field and fires a pass incomplete. It's Try to uh, get it. Yeah, that's uh, we haven't uh, called his name. Well, you did once. That's Langston Bridges. And uh, Bridges uh, could not latch onto that, so it'll be fourth down and three for the Wildcats. Well, I'm looking for another fake punt, Don. I don't know about you. Boy, I bet North Forney might be They too. may be looking for it, too. <laughs> it was a fantastic play, and I'm glad they called it because uh, it certainly worked out last time. So we'll see what happens this time. It's fourth and uh, a little shorter than it was on that last time that they did the uh, I'll tell you what. Once punt. you do that successfully, that plants the seed, and yep. they will – they will. Ne- they may sh- kind of ease up on their rush. We'll see. Back to a Wallace, and got it away. Uh, hammers it down the field, and uh, then bounces out of bounds inside the North Forney 35-yard line to the 33. It'll be first down and 10 for the Falcons at their own 33. They lead 35 to seven. They still have 204 to try to create some more mischief here in the first half. Pushed them back a little bit more in their territory than what they're used to, but uh, uh, they they seem to come out and on the first play just have a big play trying to catch the uh, Wildcat defense uh, off guard. Here they come. Yeah, just over the kind of the two-minute drill now, and that usually means you have to kind of throw deep. And Acuna steps back and looking, and he will sail the deep ball uh, incomplete over through everybody there. 
A little bit of pushing there, but no flag. Uh, it was kind of one-on-one -on -one coverage, and uh, he threw the ball very deep and way over his receiver. Uh, even the Wildcat defender didn't have a chance for it, so yeah, it brings up second down, and they're going to snap it quick. And a ball back to Acuna, and he looks uh, down the field again, throws the ball incomplete. He was throwing an out, and it looked like Cam Allen ran the ball more to the inside part yeah. of the field, and so incomplete. So now it'll be third down. They're trying to catch the Wildcats off guard. They're snapping the ball quick before they can even get set up. Yeah, they like the up-tempo a little bit. Acuna back in the pocket, and he uh, pocket collapses, and he is sacked back there. The and ball the is loose. loose on the ground. Uh, North Forney got on it. I think, unless somebody wrestled it away from him. Uh, no indication In the there. Here we go. Number 41, Wyatt Smithson. Well, Smithson got credit for that sack that uh, jarred the ball loose. Awesome. That yeah. may have been the guy that has helmet came off. That might have been Josh Anderson, 6'2", 342. Brings up fourth down. That uh, covered the football for North Forney, and here comes the punt on fourth down and 16. Back to the punter. Good rush by the Wildcats. Uh, ball is away. And roughing the kicker. As uh, it uh, rolls all the way inside the 30, but as Chad mentioned, the official's right on top. They're not going to let that uh, kicker get hit. And, uh, well, he, uh, it looked like to me he drew the foul on that one. Uh, they, the Wildcats got a, little, uh, got a little close and bumped into each other. And the, the if it's just running into, into the kicker, five yards. Down. Okay, that, that's a big difference. Roughing the kicker sure, is 15 sure, yards of running into the kicker. They needed uh, at least 16 yards or something for the first down. So, And their punter really tried to, to uh, sell it there. He uh, flopped around a little bit uh, as soon as he got Correction. brushed up against. Decline. First down. Forney. So North Forney is going to take the punt. They're going to – or the Wildcats are – yeah, they're going to decline the, the the penalty so that they're going to let the punt stand instead of kicking it again five, sure. yeah, five yards closer because it wasn't going to change anything. They were going to have to kick it again. I guess they felt they had a good punt. The Wildcats really didn't have a return, so they're going to push the Wildcats all the way. About the 28-yard line yes, for the as Wildcats. We, as we first would say, 10. familiar territory for the Wildcats. First Boy, isn't that the truth? Yeah, for the Hoops hardware first down, and I guess we have uh, Wallace back in there. Wallace is back yep. there in the shotgun. And he takes a snap, and he will fire the ball downfield. Receiver open, but incomplete. Couldn't hook up with Weston Fields. Yeah, a, a great route for Weston Fields, and he uh, he was running full speed, and the ball was just a little bit overthrown and a little bit out of bounds. But uh, he, that that would have been a great connection for the both of them if uh, if it could have. Well, you may remember come out. last year that Fields really burst on the scene as a really good receiver for the Wildcats. Maybe about mid-season. Back to Wallace, and here's a handoff, a good hold, uh, offensive line, and Davis running through there up to around the 34-yard line, but that'll still be short of the first by four yards. So it'll be third down, and, and uh, well, they're going to move it up to the 35-yard line, so third and three on the seven-yard gain by uh, Caden Davis. So a big play now with just 45 seconds left uh, for the Wildcats here in the first half. Uh, a handoff on kind of a draw play, and North Forney just gobbled that up for yeah, They saw loss. that coming. Yeah, they really diagnosed that, and it'll be fourth down, and and it looks like about six yards or so for the first down, and now a timeout taken. North Forney probably wants to stop the clock to get another shot or two at the ball. So we have uh, just 30 seconds left here in the second quarter. North 40, 35, the Wildcats 7. Let's take a break, and we'll be back in a moment after 1. Thank you. And welcome back to Gerald Prim Stadium where the Wildcats are down 35-7. to It's fourth down for the Wildcats. Don, they put a few seconds back on the clock during their break. It was down to, to, to 30, but now they put uh, uh, back up to 34 seconds back on the clock for the, for the Wildcats. It's fourth down. They're probably going to punt. I'm going to guess they're not going to do a fake punt this time. Uh, they don't want to give uh, uh, the Forney Falcons any type of uh, better field position than uh, if it wasn't successful. So they're probably going to kick it away. I'm guessing, but we'll see what uh, Greg Owens has in store for us. And uh, Wallace back to punt the ball, and you can bet that uh, Falcons get that ball. It'll probably be some more long passes, you would think. I've never known Randy Jackson to call off the dogs against the Wildcats. Here's a kick by Wallace. Uh, 
And it's going to be fielded at the 33, across the 35 to the 40 for the receiver, 45-50. And finally, a drag down uh, around the 46-yard line in Wildcats territory. And 23 seconds remain for the Falcons. Yeah, they uh, can certainly make something happen. And uh, you're probably going to be looking for a big uh a big pass play right out of the gate here on first down for the Falcons. Yeah, just 23 seconds, but uh, boy, they have some talented guys, and uh, we, we've seen them already go up and get one that was kind of a jump ball thrown down the field. Yeah, number two out here to the right for the yeah, Falcons. Yeah, he's a good one. There's Acuna, and he's looking his way. He fires the ball down the field. A lot of uh, contact, contact down the field, and uh, there's no flag on the play. Well, the ball was, was really overthrown, and I guess they, uh, the officials thought that they just couldn't get to it. So but, uh, uh, a lot of contact, you're right. Incomplete, yeah, one of those maybe that the rule could not be caught. Second down and 10 from uh, the 47-yard line for the Falcons. 18 seconds uh, left now in the first half, and Acuna will run it with Ty Collins, and uh, he is going to be dragged down there. By the Wildcats, I believe that was uh, Carrillo on the tackle. And uh, North Forney has stopped the clock with 11 seconds uh, left. And it's going to be third down and about five. We do have timeout here, 11 seconds uh, in the second quarter. 35 for North Forney, seven for the Wildcats, and we'll be back uh, in a very quick moment. Welcome back to Gerald Prem Stadium. The score, 35-7 to with the Falcons over the Wildcats. Only 11 seconds left in the half. Uh, the Falcons have the ball, Don. You think they're going to throw deep again, I'm sure. Well, they wouldn't have, I don't think, called a timeout if they wanted to just burn up the clock. So I think that's coming. This final 11 seconds with 47 yards to go. Acuna back to pass, looking deep. But the Wildcats have another idea, a sack there for the Wildcats. A good one by... Steven Janitas, he was a center last year, but they moved him to the defensive side. Wait a minute, that's a different player. That's a bright, Brighton a Rooter. And the clock runs out on the Falcons for the half. It is halftime. Uh, North Forney 35 and the Wildcats 7. We'll turn it over to Chad now for what he's got in mind for halftime. Yes, well, and uh, uh, of course the Wildcats... Uh, the Wildcat Band will be out in just a minute. They'll have 28 minutes to fill up the uh, uh, the half, uh, and they've taken their time last time with uh, uh, getting all set up. And uh, we saw the Blue Blazes out on the field uh, earlier uh, before the game started, and so I was thinking maybe that uh, uh, they would uh, uh, perform also, but uh, they were not able to perform at the last home game, Don, if you've uh, – Remember, as you listened to the last home game, because I, I think they had uh, a COVID scare in the, the Blue Blazes. So uh, we'll uh, take, a, take a break as they get set up, and we'll be back with you in uh, just a moment. And welcome back to Gerald Prem Stadium, where uh, it's halftime. The Wildcats are down 35-7. to seven. The North Forney Falcons uh, have just uh, un unleashed on the Wildcats. And uh, now we have Ross. Ross, the intern, is in the press box with us, and we're going to talk some stats. We've been trying to track the uh, stats as the, uh, as, as the game's been going on in the first half, and um, unfortunately it just uh, hadn't gone well for the Wildcats. Right, Ross? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, one thing we talked about with Coach Owens this week when we met with him on Wednesday is that this defense is very opportunistic, and you all touched on that before the game started. You know, They scored a lot when they played Lone Star not too long ago, and we saw it a lot tonight. Yeah, well, within two minutes in, they had a pick six return. Right. So, I mean, it's – and unfortunately, that would be the very definition of starting off on wrong, starting off on the wrong foot. Right, and so yeah, the, their defense has been uh, very tough. And then uh, on offense, of course, uh, they just busted out of the gate. And uh, a, a lot of times, just like we saw in the in the last uh, the last game that uh, that we had, it's been so long ago now. It uh, seems like last season, but uh, the on first down, they just come right out of the gate and they have a big play, and they're they're catching uh, our Wildcat defense off off guard. And uh, they've got some very quick receivers, and I know you've got some stats that, uh, uh, on some of the receivers of, of uh, how you want to, uh, 
how you want to talk about the uh, different receivers that they've had and uh, they've put uh, five touchdowns on the board uh, and so one of them was the pick six and um, then uh, the other four were uh, offensive touchdowns or did they have another they have uh, another they, defensive they, touchdown. another defensive run back and um, uh, so the defense and offense uh, of course uh, they've got a huge uh, offensive line uh, as well so and you would think they would be running the ball more often with that huge offensive line but uh, but they're throwing the ball because uh, they can protect the quarterback. Absolutely, and you're seeing, unfortunately, a lot of the opposite for the Wildcats. You know, a lot of times they'll have plays that seem to get blown up right before, right as soon as it starts. Um, when we met with Coach Owens this week, he talked about number 99, uh, Rod Brown, for the North Forney Falcons. That was the player that got the fumble recovery and returned right. it for a touchdown. Right. Um, both yeah. him and the yeah, offensive huge. coordinator. Huge. The three Wildcats couldn't take him down. I mean, oh, my he, goodness. He just carried them all in uh, into the end zone. And uh, I think the Wildcats now for the first half just have just about 100 yards on offense. Uh, so that's uh, certainly reflected uh, on the scoreboard with only seven points. And the North Forney Falcons have been averaging over 400 yards per game in the, uh, in the four games that they've played. I, I think they're – they're four and zero or five and zero, but it's hard to keep up with the schedule, folks, because uh, you know the the Wildcats have only this is their uh, third game of the season because we've uh, missed three, and uh, I think that North Forney has uh, has won five games, lost none. Uh, they may have had a bye week. They've gotten to play all their games, and so we saw the Wildcats having a tough time getting started because it'd been so long since they've been on the field. Absolutely, and um, you know, Coach Owens was talking about earlier this week how. You know, emotions were high, feelings were good going into this week, and I think a lot of that could probably be put up to more or less what we saw in the loss versus uh, Frisco Wakeland in the season opener. Right, and so, uh, but we've had some good performances uh, by uh, by some Wildcats. Uh, they, they've uh, changed it up at quarterback, uh, putting uh, Mitchell in for a, a few rounds there, and then, uh, of course, Mitchell's been all over the field. He He's uh, uh, on the kickoff return, and he's gotten most of the kickoff returns. Here comes the uh, Blue Blazes. Uh, out uh, to uh, perform. And so we were just talking about that here a little bit ago. We're going to switch over to that, and we don't want to uh, uh, miss out on that because they haven't gotten to perform this year. And so the uh, Blue Blazes will now perform for us. Starters for this year are senior Tatiana Moore and juniors Denia Gatlin, Desiree Hall, and McKenna Lado. for this year are Lieutenant Macy Peppins, Lieutenant Haven Walker Moore, First Lieutenant Bailey Early, Co-Captain Emma Eddins, and your Captain Macy Swafford. The Blazers would like to recognize this girl's spirit girl, Desiree Hall. The Blazers would also like to recognize their Blaze of the Week, Olivia Worth. Tonight, at long last, the Blazers proudly take the field to perform their palm routine to Give Me Some Lovin'.
gentlemen, your Sulphur Springs High School Blue Blazes. The Blazes are under the direction of Tisha McCullough and Kenny McGraw. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 50-yard line. The band is led onto the field by senior drum majors Tristan Stewart and Galileo Sosa and junior drum major Joel Villarino. Ladies and gentlemen, here they come. Man, oh man, that Wildcat Band. Tonight, the band is excited to continue its 2020 performance season with our entire competition show entitled Paris Sketches. The Wildcat Band would like to recognize this week's section of the week and recipient of the coveted spirit stick, the percussion section. And this week's band members of the week are Kenny White and James Goggins. So sit back, relax, and travel with us to Paris, the city of lights. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sulphur Springs High School Wildcat Band.
Directors for the band are Spencer Emmert, Elizabeth Bilecki, Jeffrey Garza, Elliot Ayo, Brittany Robinette, Anthony Parati, and Dr. Steve Proctor. Tonight's soloists were Matthew Sherman, Tyler Burnett, Tristan Stewart, Rose Oyad, and Logan McCain. And tonight's one quartet features Brooklyn Artisan, Jackson Burnett, Joel Villarino, and Galilea Sosa. Well, uh, Follow the band next week, uh, next week to Mesquite as they perform in their first competition. Performance is at 2.40 at Mesquite Memorial Stadium. Go band and go Wildcats! Well, another great performance by the Wildcat band. If, uh, uh, at first, if you caught that, uh, uh, solo, well, the saxophone solo at the very beginning, that was, uh, Matthew Sherman, who was uh, playing double duty. He's a football player, and I, I always love to see that uh, folks that uh, uh, can do several different things extracurricularly, which is even harder to say. But, and then I saw a couple of, uh, of the uh, Blue Blazes were uh, also out there um, uh, playing instruments as well during the band. But they interrupted our stats, which is fine. Uh, we'll take that because uh, uh, we want to support the – the Wildcat Band as well, and uh, as you uh, heard, they've got uh, one of their first performances uh, coming up uh, next week in Mesquite. So uh, let's get back on the stats. We were talking about um, the Falcons, I think, that are averaging over 400 yards a game, and I think that's what we're seeing here. Absolutely, yeah, and unfortunately for the Wildcats, they are just under 200 in the first half, so they are well on their way to meeting their average for games. And unfortunately, also the Falcons are averaging 43 and a half points per game and sitting at 35 to seven for the Falcons. I mean, yeah, I know it's it's uh, it's unfortunate for the Wildcats because this is uh, the the season really started over uh, on this game. It was uh, the Falcons came in at five and zero, uh, and the the Wildcats have missed uh, uh, three games and they're they're zero and two. But it's all really zero to zero right now because we've entered into a zone. Um, type of competition because of COVID and because of the games being canceled and all that. So now the Wildcats have three competitors and uh, don't make me name them right now, Ross, but of course North Forney is the first one uh, and then we have two other uh, competitors in our zone and then whoever places first and second in that zone competition then, then moves forward toward the playoffs. That's the way it's going to be handled at the, for the rest of the season. Right, right, absolutely. And I believe another one of those teams is Greenville. Greenville and then maybe Crandall. Crandall, that maybe. sounds right. I think Crandall's coming here next week, and then we go to Greenville the week after that. And so uh, it's really a strange type of playoff system, uh, obviously for a strange year that we've had. Uh, but at least the, uh, the Wildcats get to come out and play tonight. And uh, as we look out at, uh, at the crowd, I think we've got about two – 250, I would call it, uh, 250 spectators. Uh, uh, and then over on the North Forney side, not even 100 people made the, uh, made the game. Uh, maybe some of them watching, one, watching it on our YouTube channel. Uh, but uh, so uh, some folks have got, got to come out. The Blue Blazers got to perform for the first time the, the entire season. Uh, the Wildcat Band did a fantastic job with their uh, competition performance. Uh, they actually uh, performed it last Thursday, I believe it was, not yesterday, but a week ago Thursday, uh, in a special performance where they came to the prim and the, uh, the parents and the supporters and the family members of the band members got to come and, and watch that performance. And Doug, of course, uh, recorded that. And it's available on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, what else to, uh, would you like to say about uh, the stats, uh, Ross? It's unfortunately not, uh, not a lot in favor uh, for the first half for the Wildcats, um, except for uh, Matthew Mitchell. Uh, we don't have his individual stats right now, but uh, that uh, young man has been playing all over the field. He's, uh, he's been a receiver. He, he caught uh, uh, a, a bomb of a pass. I, I think it was the fake punt he caught. Uh, and uh, Caden Wallace, of course, uh, a quarterback, and then Matthew Mitchell uh, served some time as a, as a quarterback. Matthew Mitchell also uh, uh, returned one of the kickoffs. Uh, no, he's returned several of the kickoffs, actually. Uh, and, and unfortunately, we've had several kickoff uh, returns because 
the North Forney Falcons have, have scored and then get to get to kick off again. So uh, it's been uh, an interesting first half, and uh, hopefully the Wildcats can turn it around uh, for the second half. What do you think they need to uh, to, to do? They uh, need to size. What do you think uh, Coach uh, Greg Owens is uh, laying down the law with uh, in the locker room right now, Ross? Well, it's very interesting because just like you said, not a whole lot has unfortunately gone right for the Wildcats in the first half. But at the same point, just like you said, um, Matthew Mitchell came in at quarterback. And if I'm not mistaken, it was that same drive that uh, he was swapped out and then there was the fake punt. And, yeah, um, absolutely. And that was a huge play. And I mean, two, if not three laters that set up a 30-yard pass to, to number 46, uh, Carson Fenton, if I believe. Right. And so, right. I mean... So they, they've done plays that have worked well, but unfortunately, a lot of times, like I was saying before we uh, went and saw the band play, it's just a lot of times they'll start off drives on the wrong foot, an incomplete pass, a loss of yardage, and so they really need to start out drives hot and continue hot and continue to attack what seems to be working, and I think... Um, just like y'all were saying during the first half, I mean, you know, once you start doing that fake punt, it alerts the other team that really anything is on the table. Right, and that's why when they turned around and uh, after we scored, then we tried uh, an onside kick as well because we needed to keep the ball and get points on the board. Well, they they saw that coming. They let it breeze right by. It went out of bounds, and uh, it was uh, uh, Falcon ball on the 48-yard line, I believe, uh, So, or uh, maybe even the 43. But uh, So, yeah, it didn't, didn't work out well uh, that, that time. And, and uh, But I like that Greg Owens always uh, goes back uh, to the uh, secret playbook and pulls things out and tries to keep the uh, other team guessing. And with a team like this, that's what it's going to take. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think what they need to do is something that unfortunately didn't work for them a lot in the first half. Um, a lot of times they would dump out past to the flat, a lot of times to the B back uh, or a tight end. And many of the other and the other two games we covered, a lot of times those passes did work and they could get about four or five, maybe even six yards. So I think if they can, again, start off on the right foot and kind of start to to put the, the North Forney defense on their heels, not react, but be proactive. Exactly, and uh, so that's going to do it for our halftime analysis as the uh, Wildcats are coming back out on the field and uh, stretching and getting ready for the second half. Looks like we've got about three and a half minutes left in in halftime, so we'll see what the officials, how they get them rounded up and lined up, but we're going to take a break and take care of business, and we'll be back with you in just a little bit. And we, as we rejoin the head with you at uh, Sulphur Springs, Gerald Prim Stadium, the North Forney Falcons uh, coming back on the field. We just have uh, a little under a minute left uh, in the half as the Wildcats are getting ready to come back on the field as well. And we'll start the second half here at Gerald Prim Stadium with the North Forney Falcons 35 and the Wildcats 7. So, it's uh, Don, it's been a tough first half for the Wildcats. Yeah, that's uh, an understatement. Uh, just, a, you know, a couple of defensive touchdowns. That never helps too much. Right, and, yeah. And the guys from Goonville over there, uh, they're pr kind of proud of that. That's something Randy Jackson started. And yeah, I saw that on the side of their, uh, right. the, where, where they enter in, into the field, their big uh, Kind of their persona up. over yep. there. Goonville, population 11, of yeah. course. <laughs> so for the 11 players that are on the field at the time, I'm guessing is what that's. I guess uh, so. Yeah. It looks like a population of more than 11 to me. And uh, let's see who's getting the uh, kick. Uh, the uh, Falcons be getting the kickoff because uh, they won the toss and that's right. And, they and deferred. deferred, and so Wildcats got the kickoff at the beginning of the first half, and the North Forty Falcons are are getting ready to receive the Jay Hodge Chevrolet kickoff for the start of the second half. And uh, uh, like uh, Ross and I were uh, talking during halftime, Don, and uh, you, you can uh, either confirm or deny or agree or disagree that uh, maybe Greg Owens needs to pull out the surprise playbook and uh, try to uh, shake things up a little bit here to try to try to put some points on the board. Well, it couldn't hurt, um, you know, and a great fake uh, on punt? the punt. Yeah, that worked out great. And, that's, you know, I'm always looking for that, and I'm, I'm glad they did it. And uh, it even worked out better because uh, it was uh, one quarterback throwing it to the backup quarterback. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, Josh Tavera's got it teed up. This Jay Hodge kickoff. And uh, North Forney with a couple of guys deep. And uh, yeah, Tavera, 
Well, kick the ball onside kick, but a real nice grab by the North Forney guy before he hit the ground there. Made yeah. a nice catch on a hot ball. I wasn't going to say that, but uh, I thought I was thinking that maybe they would come out with an onside kick. I wasn't going to jinx it. Uh, and it didn't work out. Uh, again, the Forney Falcon jumped on it, and uh, it's going to be uh, first and ten. And that was uh, Josh Lauren. Uh, on that recovery, and here's uh, the play with Acuna rolling to the right, throws a pass. Oh, big tall receiver catching the secondary. 40, 35, down to about the 32-yard line. Number two for Again, the Falcons. Cam Allen, a wide receiver. Yeah, so they're going to move the chains, and they're already deep into Wildcat territory. Looks like they're going to be, what, on our 34, Don? Uh, down around, yeah, the 34-yard line. Allen, six foot four. so when I said a big tall receiver in the secondary, here's a uh, running play, uh, and uh, the Wildcats have this one defensed very well, and they will tackle the ball carry for yeah, a, number 21. Yeah, that's Ty Collins, and uh, a two-yard loss on the run, second down and 12 from the uh, Wildcat 35-yard line. So the Falcons now, uh, you know, Collins, uh, other than running the ball into the end zone down in, in the red zone, uh, well, I say that, and he rips one right here, and he's heading to the house. He did get inside the 10, dragged down at the 5. I was just going to say they've held him in check, but uh, hold everything as he rumbles all the way down to the 5-yard line. So first down and goal now for the North Forney Falcons, and they'll hit. They'll call Collins' number again, and he uh, burrows down near the goal. Touchdown by uh, North well. Forney. So that'll uh, dial up six more. Yep, they, um, I bet you were watching that official on the far side. Yeah, he, he was, never signaled. But he the, never signaled but anything. But the guy on the near side did, and that's where I was looking. Right. I just got a correction via text on our zone uh, team matchup, so I'll give you all that information. Uh-oh. Another, you guys, another adoring fan has texted me. Yeah, you guys, you, need, you needed your zone expert here. Yes, right. Well, I said Crandall. It's actually Corsicana who we're meeting up with next week. That's right. That's a senior night ball game and then Greenville. Mm -hmm. Then the seeding games. Here's the extra point uh, attempt, and it is good. 10-51 didn't take North Forney long. 10-51 left in the third quarter. New score here from Gerald Prem Stadium. North 40, 42, and the Wildcats 7. Let's take a couple of spots here, and we'll be back in a moment. And we're back at Gerald Prem where the 40 Falcons are kicking off to the Wildcats. And looks kick like is down to the 20-yard line. Here's a 25 on the return. Still running with the ball is Mitchell, and he will move it up to about the 28-yard uh, line. So first and ten for the Wildcats at the 28-yard line. Oh, and Chad, familiar territory. Yes, and uh, the Hootens Hardware first down in between the, uh, the the 25 and the 30 for the Wildcats. Familiar territory for them to start off, and they just had trouble getting it down the field, especially when they start here. And uh, once again, Caden Wallace is uh, back in the shotgun for the Wildcats. Has two receivers out to the right, one to the left, and they'll try a running play and a little bit uh, up the middle of the field on the uh, running back uh, on the uh, carry there for, uh, I believe that was Caden Davis, it was. Yep, and the two receivers that were lined up on that play, one was Mitchell and the other was, uh, I think, uh, number five. Looks like a gain of about four on the play. Second down and six for the Wildcats up around the 33-yard line. And uh, that's uh, where they will go again. And Wallace back in the shotgun will take the snap. He's looking to the left. He fires a man open. It is caught. It was juggled and caught there by Matthew Mitchell. A fantastic catch by Mitchell to get the Wildcats over the uh, midfield into Falcon territory. They're all the way down. What's that going to be? The 42-yard line. It is like at the Don. 42. First down and 10 for Hoot the Wildcats. Hootons and Hardware first territory. Down. That yeah. is uh, Hooten's Hardware first down. And there's a snap to Wallace. He uh, throws it out in the flat, caught by Davis. Davis across the 40 and uh, will be tackled uh, about the 38-yard line. That's a gain of about four on the play. Be second down and six as the Wildcats are heading toward the uh, Falcon goal a little bit. 
Good run by Davis. He dropped uh, his shoulder and uh, got another couple of yards out of that by running over defender. Well, I tell you, he just always has that effort. He's going to run as hard as he can run every time he gets his hands on that ball. Weston Fields on the far side. Here's a snap, and they'll uh, fake and keep by Wallace, and Wallace hits it up in there down to about the 35-yard line. That'll be three yards short of the first down. Be third down and three, the ball down on the 35, and you would think this would definitely be four-down territory here for the Wildcats. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mitchell still in as a receiver. C.J. Williams in as a receiver. Yeah, he's in the slot. And they're both to the left for Wallace. He takes a snap, and here's a running play right up the middle. That should be enough for the first down. It... Uh, Yep, they're yeah, moving the chains. Moving the chains. First down and 10 uh, for the Wildcats. Another Hootens Hardware first down. Hootens Hardware is more than just nuts and bolts. Emory, Texas. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line. And Wallace looking uh, to the sideline to get that play. And then he looks at the wristband. For the conversion. The conversion chart. Two receivers out to the left. And here's a handoff, uh, Caden Davis, and he's across the 30 to the 29, gain a three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. And something that Forrest Gregg never heard of, a band bust. That's when you misread the band or something or the player does not execute the play that he's supposed to on the band call. And so that's a band bust. A band bust. And I guarantee yeah. you, Forrest Gregg never heard of that. Right. We used to take the band bus to band competition, <laughs> but that was a different thing, I think, Don. Yeah, now they just call them yellow dogs. So second down and seven from the uh, seven. the 29-yard line for the Wildcats. Unsportsmanlike. Uh-oh. 16 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. So we had some kind of uh, unsportsmanlike conduct that will cost North Forney 15 yards. A juicy field position, and that will be another first down, Chad. Yes, another Hooten's Hardware first down, and they will take it, even if it's on a penalty. We really didn't catch the unsportsmanlike conduct, and something must have uh, been out of sight, and they had to discuss, but uh, moves the Wildcats down, uh, what is that, the 14-and-a-half yard line. line. Yeah. So from the 14, first down and 10 for the Wildcats in North Forney Territory. Wallace uh, throws the ball good. Oh, incomplete. Boy, I thought he, Mitchell had it, yes. but then he looked back behind him, and there was the ball on the ground. So second down and 10 on the incomplete pass. Great field position for the Wildcats. Uh, hopefully they can put it in the end zone on this one. A couple of uh, regular receivers out there, Don. I'd look for Weston Fields. How about that? He may be have an all-world cornerback on him. I'm, I'm not sure, but they'll run the ball. Davis, Davis uh, hits down around the 10-yard line, picked up four quick. Some, and it'll be third down and about six from the 10-yard line. Something has changed on the uh, Wildcat offense on that right side because they're running Caden Davis right up through there, and they're, he's getting some extra yardage every time. Something that they saw on this uh, three-stack uh, defense. And here's a snap back to Wallace. He failed the pass. Touchdown to uh, Fenton. Wonderful pass right over the middle. He was wide open. Uh, a great connection with uh, Kate Wallace and Fenton. So put six more points on the board for the Wildcats. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says, way to go, Wildcats, for getting that touchdown. Now 42-13, to 13, waiting for the extra point by the Wildcats. Yeah, Josh Tavera, the man down there, he'll sure be on uh, Lexi Upton's soccer team when uh, – and they're, uh, they'll, it won't be too long. Do they, they will start practice right around the Thanksgiving. And uh, Mitchell, the holder. Of course, uh, Josh will be playing some football, and we'll have to clear that opportunity first. He, his extra point is good. And a new score now from Gerald Prim Stadium, 7-16 left here in the third quarter. North Forney, 42 and the Wildcats, 14. We'll take a break, and uh, we'll be back in a moment or maybe about – uh, 60 seconds. Welcome back to Gerald Prim Stadium where the Wildcats just put another touchdown on the board. So it's 42-14, the Falcons over the Wildcats. 7-16 left in the third quarter. 
The Falcons are back to receive the Jayhawks Chevrolet kickoff by the Wildcats. That it's an onside kick. Let's see. No, he's going to kick this one deep. They fool me. And North Forney takes it at about the 11, and they'll hand off a uh, handoff back there, coming around the left side, moving up to the 25. Did not fool the Wildcats no, a lot. they were all over that. Uh, and they tackle him at around the 28-yard line. Kind of Wildcat territory for a start of a right, drive. Right, yeah, the Falcons are back, pushed back into their own territory. So uh, uh, hopefully the Wildcat defense can come out and make something, the, something of this, pushing it back. They they tried a little trick play, handed it off back in the backfield uh, after the, uh, the receiver – uh, back deep uh, caught the kickoff, but uh, the Wildcats saw that coming. So, 72-yard drive for the Wildcats. That's the second uh, touchdown pass grabbed by Carson Fenton and thrown by uh, Caden Wallace. Here's a handoff, a running play for North Forney, and a man bursting into the secondary there on a, a very nice run uh, all the way uh, past the 45 up to about the 47-yard line, North Forney territory, first down and 10. Now they're back in familiar territory. That was DeMarcus Kirk was a running back, and he's going to take the ball again, and this time the Wildcats blow that play up. Really good defense there by some of, several of those Wildcats. They dropped him for a loss of three or four, but the uh, rep is going to give him the uh, forward progress right at the low. Devin Franklin was uh, among the defenders. There were about three, but he's a real tall uh, linebacker, and he's hard to miss out there. Here's a running play for North Forney, and uh, get around the corner there, and then across the 50, and then tackled. Uh, yeah, let's identify that player. They're beginning to use a lot more of their roster. That was Jermaine Oakley. Third down and about four now for the uh, Falcons. Lined up quick at the 48-yard uh, line in Wildcats territory. And here's a player bursting right up the middle, first down into the secondary, heading uh, once again uh, Ty Collins, I believe, inside the 20, down around the 17-yard uh, line. A huge play for the Falcons right up the middle and uh, just caught the Wildcats looking. And they're lining up again and ready to go again before they even got the stick set. Yeah, they, well, they've got to let those guys get back mm -hmm. in there. And they, it ball's down around the 17-yard line, and we have a timeout taken. Defense, Defense takes timeout. 5.54 left here in the third quarter. North 40, 42, Wildcats 14 back in a moment. And we're back at Gerald Prim Stadium where the uh, North Forney Falcons are marching down the field against the Wildcats. Uh, Don, they're, they're deep into Wildcat territory, first and ten. Yeah, what you used to call the red zone or a penetration back in the old playoff days, the 17-yard line inside the 20. And now Acuna hands off uh, once again uh, Ty Collins, and this time he hits the Wildcats brick wall down there. And that will be uh, actually a loss of about one yard. It'll be a second down and 11 now from the 18-yard line. Well, they, uh, the Wildcats wrapped them up on that one. But uh... And here's a snap back to Acuna. They'll try a running play again and a few broken tackles in there, but not a whole lot. Gets down to around maybe the 14-yard line. It's still going to need about seven for the first down. So third down and seven is... Uh, Washington used to call their big offensive line the Hogs, and if there was ever a name that would apply to these guys, these 300-pounders, boy, they are the Hogs down there, and they're just trying to power over the Wildcats right now on third and seven. Acuna rolling to the right. He may keep. He's going to keep 15, 10, 5. He dives for the pylon. I think he's going to be down at the three. They say he went out of bounds. It will be a first down. So North Forney, first down and goal to go from the three-yard line. Jacob Acuna's had some good moments running the football. And pretty quick. Uh, he's very, very quick, actually. And he's back in the shotgun. We'll take the snap. Running play right up the middle. Looks like he got in there. And touchdown for Goonsville. Or Goonville. Goonville. That's right. It's just singular. Well, I don't know much about Goonville. I have been over in their basketball gym, and they talk about it over there, too. And the Falcons put six more points on the board, waiting for the extra point. 48-14 to 14 right now with 4.49 left in the third quarter. And once again, uh, they're going to kick it. They've been letter perfect doing that tonight. Six for six. The ball is down, and the kick on the way, and this kick again is good. So 4.49 left here in the third quarter. New score here from Gerald Friend Stadium. It's North 40, 49, and the Wildcats 14. 
and uh, we'll take care of business, as Bill Bradford used to say, and we'll be right back. And we're back at Gerald Prim Stadium where the Wildcats uh, will receive the J. Hod Chevrolet kickoff. Uh, too much uh, kickoff receiving in this game for us, I'm afraid, Don. But the Wildcats are down 49-14 to 14 as the North Forney Falcons are really uh, 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 having a great season. And uh, they're lined up for the kickoff. And back uh, deep is going to be Mitchell and Caden Davis for the Wildcats, it looks like. Yeah, they played uh, the city championship against Forney. They scored 61 in that game in a 61-21 to 21 game. Here's a short kick. Lock has to take it at the 16, across the 20 to the 25. Caden Davis across the 30 and then up around the 35-yard uh, line. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. And perhaps one of the better uh, field positions of the night for yes, the Wildcats. Yes, I was just going to say a little bit uh, more advanced than uh, their regular uh Field position as the Wildcats will have a Hooten's Hardware first down of uh, uh, the 35 yard line of their own territory. Let's uh, bump it back to the 34 just to be real anal retentive about yeah, it. Be real stickler about that. And so first and 10 from the uh, 34, and it'll be a running play for the Wildcats. That's J.J. Uh, Hall, and he's and we're going to gain about one up to the 35. And he took that from Mitchell, who is in as the quarterback right now. That is correct. So it'll be second. Well, they moved it back, so no gain on the play. Wildcats also playing without one of their better receivers. They're playing tonight without uh, Matthew Sherman. But he played the saxophone during halftime. Oh, my gosh. I did not know that. Here's uh, Mitchell's pass down the field. Incomplete. Tried to find Weston Fields down there, and he was very well covered by North Forney. And he was – and uh, Reed Williams is also in the game as a receiver. He was not the intended target on that particular uh, pass. As you said, that was Weston Fields. But uh, on the near side for us is uh, Reed Williams and Cable Green. Excuse me, Cable Glenn. Glenn, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine, I have a funny feeling that uh, Reed Williams may be a uh, promotion for the injury to Sherman this week. Here's a uh, back to pass, an incomplete down the field. Uh, uh, intended intended to, for uh, Cable Glenn. Yes, for Cable Glenn, just who we mentioned. And uh, he came across, ran a great route. And uh, to, to be honest, it just, hit, it just hit him in the hands and bounced off. Uh, so just, Punt time. Yep, and once again, Caden Wallace, for the a, ten, a real dangerous passer. You know, that's one thing. You do it once, and every team will have to practice this. Yep, every team that plays the Wildcats will have to spend some practice time defensing the uh, fake. We'll see what they do right here. Quarterback in punt formation. This fourth and ten from the thirty-four, and there's the punt by uh, uh, by Wallace and it goes out of bounds and let's see where the, the 44 officials are. 44 is what it looked like. But. Yeah, 40, no, no, 48 way yard up here. Line. Yeah, yeah, 48 in Wildcats territory. Yeah, so not uh, not good news for the Wildcats as the North 40 Falcons will start in Wildcat territory on the 48 yard line. Kind of familiar territory for them. but uh, Yeah, they've had some real good field position like they yes. need the help. Looking for the big bomb on the first play here because that's uh, kind of what they've been yeah, they, they like doing. to do that uh, when there's kind of a change like this. Acuna's in an uh, empty backfield and now hold everything. And, uh, time okay. out. Time out taken by North Forney. 4.05 left in the third okay. quarter. Whoops. Oh, we. He's just called the timeout. Just called the timeout. 4.05 left in the third quarter. North Forney 49, the Wildcats 14. And uh, we'll uh, hear from two of our best sponsors, and we'll be back in a moment. And welcome back. Yeah. They're coming back to the line of scrimmage, John. And uh, back to Acuna. Here's a sweep to the right side for North Forney. Around the corner, the uh, running back goes down to about the 42. It's a gain of six on the play. And once again, that was Oakley, the running back. He's a quick one. So second down and four now for the Falcons. The Wildcats 42-yard line. Again, Jacob Acuna takes the snap. And here's a running back, Oakley, right up the middle, first and 10. And that's going to be down to the 36-yard line. And that's going to be First down and 10 for the Falcons. They're going to move the chains, and they're lining up, ready to go again. Yeah, they quick tempo offense, and Acuna hands off. And again, Oakley 
And he will move to around the 25-yard line. That's a short gain on the play of about two. Second and eight. We do have an injured player timeout, James. 3.20 left uh, here in the uh, third quarter. And uh, North Forney leading 49-14 over the Wildcats. Back in a moment. And welcome back to Jail Prim Stadium where the uh, injured player for the Falcons has trotted off the field under his own power now, Don. Looks like he uh, he's going to be okay. It was number 73. Yeah, he's one of their seniors. That's Bobby Barber, 6'3", 277. And uh, I know he's excited about uh, getting some game time in there. And and uh, he did run off, as Chad indicated, so it looked like he'll be okay. Just got dinged up, apparently. Here's back to Acuna, and it's a receiver around the left side across the uh, 30 down, well, all the way down to about the 20-yard line, first down and 10 for the Falcons on that uh, flanker around play that was run by Demarcus Kirk. No, I take – well, that was – yeah, that was Kirk. Okay. Kirk lined up again. So here's first and 10 from the 22 for the Falcons. Uh, a fake and then a handoff to Oakley right up the middle. And he's going to be uh, one yard short of the first down, down around, or a couple of yards short of the first down, down around the 16. It's probably about two yards to go. Let's call it second and four, actually. It didn't go as far as I thought. Here's another uh, flanker around play around the left side, inside the 10, down along the five-yard line. That was, again, LaMarcus Kirk. They liked that play. Put him down on the five-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for the Falcons. Uh, you have all the way down there, they're going to uh, have a real good chance of putting it in the end zone. So first and goal from the five. Once again, North Forney knocking on the door here. They average uh, 43 and a half points a game, something like that. Here's a bad snap, and Acuna is snowed under. Good play defensively there by Meskimen, Landry Meskimen. That's going to push him all the way back to the 15-yard line. So first and goal from the fifth, second and goal from the 15 on a bad snap that was muffed by the quarterback. So. Uh, on the 14-yard line, just inside the 15 there a little bit. And uh, as we are in the last two minutes of the third quarter here. So it is a goal-to-go situation still, but back around the 14. That's a, several times, two or three tonight, that we've seen bad snaps. And now Acuna throws the ball toward the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. Oh, my. And, again, that was uh, Cam Allen, 6'4", yeah, 222. I think there's going to be a, a call against the Wildcats for uh, pass interference. Yeah, it's going to be declined, of course. Yeah, big, tall receiver. Boy, that's a that's a large order for a, for a player that's uh, not as tall. And uh, so a touchdown pass, Acuna. And it seemed like he gets two or three every game, and he hit Allen again on that one. Extra point uh, pending here, 55-14. A little bit of a high snap, and the kick on the way is a good job of holding there. The kick is good. 136 left in the third quarter. New score here from Gerald Prem Stadium. North Forney 56 and the Wildcats 14. And we'll take a break. A uh, couple of spots this time, and we'll be back in a moment. And we're back at Gerald Prem Stadium where the Wildcats are back to receive the J. Hodge Chevrolet kickoff. And uh, once again, Cortez approaches the ball, puts the foot into it, a deep kick, and uh, taken at the 20-yard line across the 25 and up around the uh, 26, 27-yard line. Not even going to say it, Don. Matthew Mitchell. And it is in, in the Chad zone down there the, between the 25 and the 30. The familiar territory is the Wildcats will start uh, deep in their own territory, the 20. Seven uh, yard line looks like maybe. Yeah, uh, for I'd, the, I'd uh, say that for the Hootens Hardware first down for the Wildcats. Caden Wallace is uh, back in, uh, a senior quarterback for the Wildcats. Try to get this drive all the way to the end zone. Takes a snap. We'll hand off Caden Davis. Davis hits up in there and moves close to the 30 yard line. It'll be a gain of about three on the play. We'll call it second down and seven from the 30. And our big play of the game for this game uh, is sponsored by Sulphur Springs Dodge, and that's probably going to be that fake punt, Don, is what yeah. I would call the play of the of the game. I like that one. Yes. 
The only thing that would I would challenge that maybe that touchdown pass to Carson Fenton. But here's a direct snap now to uh, Caden Davis, and Davis will run. That's a Wildcat package run by the Wildcats, actually, up, up for three yards to the 33. And that's going to be about four yards short of the first down. So third down and four from the uh, 33-yard line for the Wildcats. Don't see a lot of Wildcat plays out of there by the Wildcats. You would think, well, I guess they're all Wildcat plays, but that's what they call that direct snap situation. And there's Wallace faking to the running back. His pass incomplete. Tried to get it into C.J. Williams. Popped by the uh, defender from the Falcons there just as he got the ball. A, a, a real good coverage, a, a strong hit, and that ball just popped right out. Fourth and four, it'll be a time when you would normally expect a punt. I guess we better say that every time now. All right. Let's see if uh, Matthew Mitchell is in as a receiver on the punt team. Oh, he's got to be out there somewhere. I don't. He's kind of like some of these other Wildcats that uh, just do everything for you. Don't see him right off, but, uh, of course, Caden Wallace is back, and he's going to punt. He got it away and uh, kicks it uh, down the field. It's a fair caught at the 32-yard line, and again, that guy tipped over backwards. He uh, does that from time to time. That was, uh, again, Colin Shipley, the uh, senior. Yeah, but he did a good job of holding on to the ball. So yeah, absolutely. The Falcons will have with uh, 17 seconds left in the third quarter. They're going to have uh, uh, – Couple of play time for a couple of plays here to try to make something happen, and then we'll change into the field. And Jacob Acuna again, and uh, uh, Jermaine Oakley's kind of been carrying the load lately. We'll take the snap, and uh, Oakley right up the middle on the run. They've kind of got Ty Collins maybe on the bench. Maybe his night's over. Straight ahead on the uh, running play, and uh, it's going to be a pretty good game but that's going to be the end of the third quarter and we'll reset the ball and give you all that information as we get into the fourth quarter we played three here at gerald prim stadium north 40 40 uh, 56 and the wildcats 14 and let's do some business and we'll be back in a moment and the first play of the fourth quarter it's a second down and about four play and uh this one is up Fairly close to, I think it's a maybe a yard short of the first down. Yeah, handoff right up the middle and uh, got, got about three yards, and it's going to be a third one. Third and one. That ball at the uh, at the 41 yard line. As North Forney, they've been content just kind of to rev up the running game here. And Jacob Acuna will take the snap and he'll try Oakley again. He has the first down easily as he moves up around the 45. Again, behind that massive offensive line, but a lot of uh, backup guys are in there now. First down and 10 for the Falcons at the 44-yard line. Maybe some Wildcats. Colson Ivey is in there for the Wildcats at defensive end. And uh, Coben uh, Wiley is also in there at the other D end. We'll uh, try to grab some other guys there. Looks like the same nose guard, Alex Rodriguez. So here's a first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Our handoff and then a fake as quarterback fakes the pass. Oakley once again hitting it right up the middle. It's going to be up around the 37-yard line. That'll be a gain of three. It'll be a second down and seven. And again, the ball is uh, at the uh, Wildcat or at the North 40, 47-yard line. And again, they're in no particular hurry here. They're playing with house money, so. Clock's winding down. Under 10, <clears throat> 10.25 left in the ball game. Deloney is in on defense. Here's uh, another handoff. And uh, about three Wildcats uh, stopped that play. Wildcats read that one pretty good. I don't think there was really any gain on the play on that one. Yes, yeah, right at the 47, so that's a no gain on the play. So, so third down now, and uh, they're going to need about seven yards. Need to achieve the 46-yard line in uh, Wildcats territory. And again, they are taking that clock down under 10 seconds of play clock. Back to Acuna. He, again, he fakes the pass after he hands off to the running back and 
runs into uh, that blue wall down there, and I see Franklin in there, and uh, several other players see who's uh, getting up off the stack there for the Wildcats. It was Wyatt Smithson, that good inside linebacker for the Wildcats. So here's fourth down and punt time for uh, North Forney, fourth and seven at their own 48-yard line. If I had to guess, I would say that Mitchell is probably back deep. That, that is Mitchell. There's a snap and uh, Ooh, just blocked. got it away. Yep. And Mitchell calls for the fair catch. Oh, the ball is dropped. It's a race for it, but it goes out of bounds inside the 15. There's a little bit of holding on the defense there as <laughs> Mitchell was trying to get to the ball, but uh, it didn't get called and the ball rolled out of bounds. Luckily, 14-yard line. Yep, luckily for the Wildcats because uh, they're going to get the ball back. Uh, yeah, he was kind of outnumbered there. He's calling for a fair catch because there's a lot of pressure, and it was a Mitchell and about five guys from North Forney. Yeah, they were breathing down on him pretty hard. They're actually – they'll move it – well, let's see. They they kept – they finally chose the 14. Were, for the Hootons Hardware first down for the Wildcats deep in their own territory on the 14. First and 10, and Mitchell's back in. Mitchell is the quarterback. You took it right out of my mouth, and here's a handoff. And Hall down the sideline across the 30 – Across the 40, Hall across the 50 to the 40 to the 35, the 30, and J.J. Hall finally tackled at the 26-yard line. A fantastic play, and uh, he could have could have gone all the way, but they were gaining on him, and then he uh, outran one defender and kind of stiff-armed him out of the way and got a, a, probably 10 or 15 more yards after that. So a wonderful play for the Wildcats and a Hootons Hardware first down uh, all the way down. 27-yard line. Tour. Territory, you bet. And so, once again, uh, Matthew Mitchell looking over to the sideline now. He's got uh, Bridges in there as the uh, D back. And uh, once, oh, I think we have a new running back now. Hall Number probably three. catching his breath. That's Deloney. And Deloney will hit right up in the middle. Oh, he, almost, he broke through, but they finally dragged him down after a nine yard gain by the big fella. Douglas Deloney. I may want to change my play of the game now by sponsored by Sulphur Springs Dodge because that was a wonderful run that we just saw by uh, Kate Davis there uh, a couple of plays ago. Uh, J.J. Hall. Excuse it? me, J.J. Hall. And Mitchell back in the shotgun will take the snap. Uh, he's a... Uh, and the whistle. Oh, the whistle blew. Whistle I think blew. they say his knee was down as he was trying to oh, pick up the ball. I think a, that... Kind of a bad snap there, and he kind of knelt down to pick it up, you think? Yeah, and it's a natural tendency to kind of that knee to go down if you're not careful, and I think that's what happened on that one. So it'll be a little bit of a loss there. So it's going to be third and about five, and the ball back at the 23-yard line. And looking toward the sideline to get that play. It's like two or three uh a couple of Wildcats coaches signaling the ball, uh, signaling the play, and I guess it depends on something that which one they uh, watch. And uh, now we have a whistle blowing here, and and now they're ready to go, and they got everybody on the same page. They can start the play clock again, and. So here are the Wildcats on third and six. Trips out to the right for Mitchell. Will take the snap a little bit of a high one, and he hands off and a good run by Deloney. He's very close to the first down. That's maybe a yard. About where he needed to go. They'll eyeball it across the field. Fourth and just short. Maybe about a yard. It looks like a little bitty yard to me. But fourth and a very short one here for the Wildcats. And, again, they send the trips out there to the left to kind of They're going to go for it. Thin the players down around the ball there for Mitchell. He takes the snap, and he will hand off. And Deloney bursting up the middle. And Deloney touchdown Wildcats from 19 yards out. And Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op says, way to go, Wildcats, as Deloney runs it right up the middle on fourth and short and takes it to the house for six points. And that dials the score up to 56 to 20 with extra point pending here for Josh Tavera with Matt, Matthew uh, Mitchell holding. He's trying to remember the player last year. He was a goalkeeper for the Wildcats soccer team and was a backup quarterback. 
That's that's a terrible thing about Noe getting Ponce. old. You can't Noe Ponce. And uh, he was Mr. Everything last year and Mitchell this year. The kick is good by Josh Tavera. Uh, back at, uh, I know uh, the soccer coach was trying to help me out there. 6.21 left uh, here in the fourth quarter. New score here at Gerald Prim Stadium. It's uh, the North 40, 56, and the Wildcats 21. And we'll uh, take a break, a uh, couple of spots, and we'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to Gerald Prim Stadium where the Wildcats have just put another seven points on the board after a touchdown and an extra point with a great run right up the middle on fourth and short. 56 for the North Forney Falcons and 21 for the Wildcats as the... Uh, you think they suspect the onside kick? Yep, and that's not. He kicked it into the flat. There's nobody there. It's uh, And North Forney does a good job of just getting back and covering that ball to 24-yard line. So the Jay Hodge Chevrolet kickoff was looking like a uh, onside kick but was not. Well, they, they smelled a rat because they only had one guy back, and he was at about the 20-yard line. He wasn't even very deep. And, and so they smelled coming. a rat, but uh, the Wildcats kicked out into the flat. And uh, So unfamiliar territory for the North Forney Falcons now. They're pushed back to their 24-yard line. Could have been an interesting play if that player hadn't been alert and got back and got on that football. Yeah, he, Sometime they just watch it bounce around, yeah. and, the, and the team, the kickoff team, can run down there and cover it. And we've got a new quarterback in, it looks like, for the uh, Falcons, number eight. Number eight, uh, that would be uh, Landon or Heath. Yep. Landon Heath, a uh, running play, and not much there. Kind of a backup running back, too. That was Ethan Howell, I believe. Ethan Howell, who's listed as a linebacker, but right now he's a, he, he, he can't spell running back, but he are one now. So as a loss of two on the play, it'll be second down and 12. That's an old joke, and I, didn't, I should not have made fun of the young man. I wasn't trying to do that. I was just He's listed as a linebacker, but he is playing running back for this uh, very talented uh, Falcon team. Second down and 12, and Heath uh, hands off, and once again, Howell hits in there. But yeah, Wildcats read that one, and they were in the backfield as the uh, as he took the, uh, as he handed off, and they wrapped him up, and so another couple of yard loss, so it's gonna be- uh, Third and 15. Yeah, third and 15 for the uh, North Forney Falcons, just exactly Back where up. the- uh, Wildcats want him, but I'm smelling big bomb pass uh, coming up here as they've got uh, three receivers out, two to one side. and uh, I'll tell you what, too. One to the uh, near side, number 13 Heath on the can near throw side. it yeah. because he, he filled in for Acuna one game against Little Elm, I think, and threw three touchdown passes. So he can do it, too. And he's firing, and he completes the pass, and it's going to be well short of the first down. Wildcats yeah. make the tackle in the secondary, but – It'll be punt time again, you would think, for North Forney. Yeah, just a short pass on the on the far side there with a couple of receivers. I'm, I'm hoping one would block, but the Wildcats wrapped up the receiver, even though it was a seven-yard, eight-yard gain. But seven uh, needed. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, fourth and long for fourth the and seven. Falcons, so they're going to have to punt it away. And so they haven't had to do this too much uh, tonight, but uh, the punter is back, and he got it out of there. Boots it uh, down the field again. Mitchell will let this one bounce, and uh, and North Forney's all around it, and they will down the ball at about the 43 in Wildcat territory. That's where the Wildcats will take over. They still have 418 to try to make some hay here as uh, quarterback Wallace leads the Wildcats onto the field. And maybe some uh, youngsters out there. We'll try to see if we see some new guys. I see Bridges is out there. And Reed Williams, uh, yep, Chad Reed's, talked about him. He's Reed's in the back ball in the game. game on the far side in the slot. So uh, Wallace, I think J.J. Hall may be the running back again. And uh, uh, Wallace is going to run across the 40 to the 45 and leans that big, tall body all the way across the 50-yard line. Yeah, he's not afraid to run and uh, drop a shoulder and uh, hit some of those defenders, and he picked up eight yards for the Wildcats, so he's right at right midfield. Field, second down and two from the 50-yard line. And Wallace uh, looking in for that next play. That is uh, J.J. Hall that's back there in the backfield. It is. And Bridges on the far side. Yeah, so the H back kind of slotted out there for the Wildcats. And here's a fake. And then Wallace looking. He fires a pass. It is caught for the Wildcats. That's Cable Glenn. And he has the first down as he hangs on at the, not the 46-yard line. 
That was a great play there because uh, Wallace had his choice of receivers. Cable Glenn was open and Reed Williams was, was open, and so a great play. I'd like to see that one again. But uh, Did a good job, too, of kind of uh, checking out his options and uh, going in the right place with the ball. So here's uh, first and 10 for the Wildcats at the 46-yard line in North Forney Territory, a run by J.J. Hall. And uh, Hall hits up in there, shakes tacklers. He's still running hard, but he got knocked backwards. But they will sure give him forward progress. Should be up around at least the 45-yard line, you would think. I think everybody on the North Forney Falcon uh, defense uh, had a hand on him at one point. He bounced around and, and broke a couple of tackles but was running sideways and, and couldn't gain any extra yardage. Yeah, and that result, one-yard gain, but at least they gave him all his forward progress that he earned there, and it'll be second down and nine. Play coming in from the sideline. 240 there. left uh, here in the football game. Again, North Forney leading 56-21. to 21. And Caden Wallace, a high snap, but he got it. Hands off to Hall. Hall hits in there across the 40. J.J. breaking tackles across the 35 to the 33-yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. A wonderful run, and he spun around and uh, uh, had that defender looking and, and gained a, a lot of extra yardage, enough for a first down. So the Hootons Hardware first down is into uh, the, about the 34 of the uh, for North Forney Falcon territory. And first down and 10 now with 2.12 left here in the fourth quarter. And Wallace again will hand off J.J. Hall. Hall right up the middle, really churning and fighting down to the 28-yard line. That should be about five yards short of the first down. So, so a second and five play coming up. And the Wildcats under two minutes now, but they uh, Wallace is trying to speed them up here a little bit. And... and uh, uh, try to get him in the end zone one more time. Wallace will keep on, on the right uh, right side, and then he's uh, jammed up in there and then dropped at about the 28. So it'll be third down, about uh, five needed for the Wildcats. Or no gain on that play. And uh, 123 and counting as the clock uh, clicking its final few seconds off here at Gerald Prim. But Wallace wants uh, another touchdown, wants to try to get the Wildcats in there one more time. Deloney back in the game as the running back. He certainly is. He's the big fella, Reed Williams, youngster, back to Wallace. And they'll hand off De Deloney around the right side, breaks a tackle, moves uh, down close to the 25, and just, again, not, uh, fighting all the way a fumble, but it was way after the whistle. And they'll mark it at the 25. That'll be about two yards short of the first down. So, but I'm this is going to be fourth and two, but I fourth have to and go two. for it at this oh, point. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, there's Wallace looking uh, over there. and Got Williams, Glenn, and uh, Bridges on the far side as receivers. I have a feeling that number three is going to get called here. Or Wallace may dial his own number. He, he can uh, run that ball for a couple. Takes a snap. Oh, he's going to pass. Chad was right. He rolls to the left. And threw the ball away on fourth down, so the ball will go over on downs. Hmm. So uh, the ball goes over on downs with just 17 seconds left. I, if North Forney has the knee play, and I can't imagine that they would uh, uh, expend any mercy whatsoever on what I've seen from them, but if uh, this would uh, be the play when you run that victory play where you take the knee and run out 17 seconds here. It's 56 right. to 21, and North Forney will win a zone game number one. The Wildcats will be 0-1, but they still have two zone games left. Corsicana on senior night here next, here, next uh, Friday, yep. and then at Greenville will close it out uh, one week later. And there's the knee play by North Forney. And again, that backup quarterback, uh, Heath, who was a junior, and I'm sure he will be the heir apparent after, well, I shouldn't assume that for Coach Randy Jackson, but uh, that's going to run the clock down. But uh, Acuna will graduate, and the Wildcats have certainly uh, grown tired of him as he's had three years of excellence against the Wildcats, and North Forney will win this one by the score of 56-21. to 21. I know the Wildcats were glad to get back on the field, but uh, – and. Uh, 
playing a powerhouse like North Forty, they're ranked number eight, I think, in the Metroplex. Right. In Class Five A, they're yeah. they've they've earned their way in there, and of course, beating Frisco Lone Star, a bigger school, a Division One, uh, compared to all these Division Two schools, but. Uh, but North Forney shocked them the first week and kind of announced to everybody, hey, we're going to be really good this year. And they have been as advertised, and they were awfully tough tonight. But a couple of bright spots for the Wildcats, a couple right. of great plays, uh, uh, the the uh, plays of the game, we'll call them, because uh, uh, I think there were two that were really uh, standouts for the Wildcats, and that was the fake punt that we loved uh, from uh, Wallace uh, pass to uh, Matthew Mitchell and uh, uh, turn, turn the game – Turn that uh, game around for the Wildcats uh, there, and, and they ended up uh, turning that into a score, I believe. And then that big run um, by um, J.J. Hall. J.J. Hall from a uh, uh, handoff from Caden Wallace. Uh, uh, just a, a great play. So, and a so, season best uh, scoring, too, Chad. 21 yes, 20, points. 21 points. So and uh, Sulphur Springs Dodge sponsors our plays of the game, uh, whether it's offense or defense. They want to uh, – highlight some of the good things that the Wildcats do, uh, So whether it's on offense or defense. And they say you don't have to be on either one when you buy a car from Sulphur Springs Dodge because you're on the right team when you go and visit them. Scott, Scott Nottingham himself told me that. So uh, the Wildcats, uh, uh, and uh, it was a game without a lot of penalties too. It's certainly not, not a That's lot of true, penalties yeah. without uh, against the Wildcats, so there's another bright spot. Uh, and uh, so just uh, – a couple of turnovers were uh, uh, kind of unfortunate for the Wildcats to turn into some scores for uh, North Forty, but they held their own against a tough team uh, tonight. Like you say, a, a very uh, uh, top-ranked team. Well, uh, the path uh, should get easier now with uh, right. Corsicana that I get the feeling that they're not quite the Corsicana of, of the past. Uh, they're still speculated to be maybe a four seed at the beginning of the season. And uh, at making that fourth playoff spot, so they could end up about there. But uh, uh, the Wildcats, if they can uh, bring their A game and have a good week of practice, uh, maybe they'll have a shot at those uh, Tigers. Uh, they've had trouble with Corsicana for the first couple of years uh, uh, in this uh, new district right. that we're in our third year with. So. And we certainly appreciate all of our listeners on KSST Radio and uh, for those that watch uh, live streaming on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, we uh, hope to see you back here uh, when we play Corsicana next Friday, which is senior night uh, for the Wildcats here at Gerald Prim Stadium. Uh, but for tonight, that's going to do it for us. We're going to be uh, sent it back to the station where our man James has uh, done so well, as he always does. And, of course, this uh, game will be uh, broadcast on Channel 18 as well. Uh, Doug Hastings on the camera. And, of course, Don Julian with play-by-play. -play and our uh, uh, Ross Lebanski did the uh, stats at halftime. Uh, and I'm Chad Young. That's going to do it from Gerald Prim Stadium. James, back to you. Thank you, guys. You've been listening to Wildcat Football on KSST 1230 AM, Sulphur Springs, Texas. We'll go back to uh, – we'll, we'll check in with uh, the TSN uh, scoreboard after this message from UIL.